Welcome to The Hague, the ultimate destination for this historic edition of the Volvo Ocean Race. My name's Noah Mike Best, and joining me here to welcome all the teams in, I have Olympian and two-time Volvo Ocean Race sailor, Annie Lush. And this certainly is going to be an unbelievable afternoon as we welcome in the seven teams after an incredible nine months of racing. It all comes down to this single moment. Leg 11 is still being contested out in the water and already it has thrown up an unbelievable display of seamanship and surprises. Position is not uh, not too bad. Uh, we have uh, we have now uh, to be uh, to be fast and uh, still pushing, pushing, pushing. So it's like the first um, first big step of this uh, leg. Next one will be uh, boy uh, the north one. We're in the lead of Norway, uh, so it's quite light. Well, we've got Brunel right behind us, just to windward. Looking like we should be in our house later today. And... We are moving. It doesn't seem like many of these ships are going our way at the moment. Back up to Norway again. Waypoint's not as far as the first one, so that's where we're heading right now. We've been to a light patch. Uh, we've got Matt Frey uh, to leeward of us. Had a little bit of a battle with them in the uh, transition zone, flapping around in no wind. And uh, that also gave the opportunity for uh, the back of the fleet to uh, catch up a little bit. I'm very happy after being two days just following them then like uh, half a mile away. Right now we have them uh, like two miles uh, to Leeward and, uh, and stem of us. And then we have um, Baxon Abel and Brunel uh, and Prestas actually behind us uh, between five and seven miles. So very happy and uh, hopefully we can keep this position. Catch up now with that friend on thing and investors, so it's actually pretty close now between the top five boats. Stress on board them, we're just enjoying it, sailing as fast as we can, and hopefully, we'll win the lake. Yeah, we're not quite sure whether Maffrey and Nong Feng are going inside or outside this uh, TSS we're coming up to. We're definitely uh, obviously going outside. Behind uh, the other guy from the west. We win or we lost uh, of two hours, but not one hour. Alors, wait and see, cross finger. And now it just comes down to the last 16 miles. The boats approaching this finish line in The Hague. They have one more turning mark to go. And then we will find out who will be the winner, not just of this leg, but of the Volvo Ocean Race. There are three boats in contention. They started this leg all tied on points. Dongfeng Race Team, Mafre and Team Brunel. I mean, Anna, you talk about historic moments. You talk about unscripted finishes to the addition of the race. I mean, this is just unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, you could not write this. And I think if you're on board right now, in one way, you'd be hating it because you'd just love to have this race wrapped up. But on the other hand, I mean, 
for three boats is anyone still, and that's, that's crazy. And it's crazy to think about how much uh, journey, how much adventure we have been through. If you've just joined us here at the Volvo Ocean Race, you've, you've picked the right moment, but this is where the route has taken us. We are talking about a lap of the planet, and we started in Europe, in Alicante, Spain. That's the home of the Volvo Ocean Race headquarters. When well, it was a different climate when we started back there, we're talking nine months ago the race began. And from there, we started with a short sprint leg to Lisbon, Portugal, a chance just to check how you were sailing the boat, whether the settings and the team that you had around you were right. Then onto the first big leg, push down south into Cape Town, South Africa. Then for the first time in this race, but you know, not, the, not the last, into the Southern Ocean before coming back up across the doldrums and into Hong Kong before a transitional leg into Guangzhou with an import series. And from there, pushing back down southeast once again across the doldrums for a second time. And then Auckland, New Zealand, a place that we saw a very close finish indeed. From there, the big one, round Cape Horn, the iconic landmark before finishing in Israji, Brazil. And then we knew that we were starting to see some very interesting things happening with the scores. And as we pushed on to Newport, Rhode Island, we started to get closer to that final double points, transatlantic leg that took us new, from Newport to Cardiff, United Kingdom. And then there, well, we started to see three, terms, three teams really starting to emerge at the top. By the time we got to Gothenburg, we knew just how close this battle was going to be. And now we're onto the final leg. It is leg 11 in to The Hague, and Team Brunel, Mafre, or Dongfeng Race Team, could still lift the trophy for the Volvo Ocean Race. It is going to be incredibly in close. And The Hague on the Netherlands coast has pulled out all the stops, and today there is an excitement worthy of the race finish. All along the harbour wall, the crowds are lining up to get their first glimpse of the teams. But in the meantime, they've been enjoying the activities here. An incredibly warm welcome is waiting for all the teams. Everybody from the city has come out here to the race village. And this is going to be the scene for the greatest showdown in the history of the Volvo Ocean Race. Three teams battling it out all the way for the final 15 nautical miles to the finish and we are going to be here to welcome them in but the stage is awaiting the teams the trophies ready to be handed over including the one that they all want to hold but only one team will it's going to come down to the wire all decided here in the hague the ultimate destination <laughs> Well, the fans have been waiting for the action to reach the finish line here in The Hague. In the meantime, they've been enjoying the incredible activities on this play here with the excitement building throughout the day as our seven teams push closer to that final finish line, the end of the race, and to a great welcome that awaits them here. It's going to be the perfect end to the race as thousands of fans will greet them after such an unbelievable journey around the world after 11 legs of racing and nine months of an unbelievable adventure. And now we can see our first live images. And Annie, well, how apt we start with Dongfeng Race Team. Let's just talk about the situation that we're seeing on the race course right now. Earlier on uh, in this leg, we saw the teams split. There was a traffic separation scheme. You can't sail through it. You had to pick one side or the other. Dongfeng Race Team, and they showed courage. They were the first one to say, well, we're going to take the longer option, but we think it's going to pay. Yeah, I mean, they had to make that call pretty early, quite far away from the traffic separation. And uh, Pascal, the navigator there, it looked to me on the tracker that they didn't flinch with that decision. Um, but I mean, such a hard decision because they knew they were going to lose early in that and uh, they were going to have to wait to the end to reap their reward, but it's coming. And it was all about the breeze. How much breeze would they get inshore? How much breeze would the other boats, that, that, that including Team Brunel and Mafre, uh, how much would they have offshore? And Dongfeng race team right now, certainly what we can see from the, the helicopter footage, they look pretty good. We can see the outrigger pole forward, so they're not on the masthead code zero, but they look good. They look like they've got pace, and certainly the forecast-wise, it looks like it's going to hold. 
Yeah, and this is the key here. Dong Fong Race Team are saying a, a tighter angle than the other teams, and uh, that's what's giving this extra speed edge. They're not having to sail downwind to the finish line. They're, they're, you know, they've got a slightly hotter angle, and that's allowing them to keep fast, pointing straight at the, that mark. Well, triple headed for Dong Fong Race Team right now. They look very good with our helicopter team just hovering uh, over front. We've got the J3, we've got the J2, we've got the Zero up on the front. Full main, of course, and our first start of our spectator boats out there on the water following them in. And this is what is waiting for them off the finish line. And all the crowds out there on the harbour wall. And Annie, I mean, almost from here, we can actually see that finishing mark. It really is just metres away from the shore. Yeah, I mean, I think the boats are going to be able to hear the crowd cheering as they come in. It's, it's that close. You almost feel like you'll be able to touch them. OK, so let's just talk about what's still left to go in this leg. We're following Dongfeng race team. They've got uh, around about 15 uh, miles to go to the finish, but it's not over yet. There's still work to do. What do fans of Dongfeng race team need to see? Uh, they've got to keep Dongfeng race team with their foot down on the pedal here because you know, they're closing into that mark, but there's still a way to go after that mark. So they've got to keep going here. It's not over yet. It is not over yet. And it's a very nerve wracking time for the fans here waiting in The Hague. And, and not least as well, the shore teams as well. Bruno Dubois, uh, the, the head of Dongfeng Race Team, is down on the dock with Amy Monkman, our roving reporter. Let's hear from him. Thanks, Nal. I know that you were saying that the sailors wanted to have this wrapped up, but I'm standing next to somebody who would very much like to have this wrapped up as well. Bruno, I don't think anyone thought it was going to come down to this, least of all you. Uh, yeah, I think that the team, uh, they're following their plans since um, we passed the mark in Norway. So I'm quite happy about, about that. And I think that's the best that could happen for the race, in fact. And a lot of fans are watching the tracker. It's looking very, very tight. Um, what do you have to say about the situation that Dunfong are currently in right now? Well, I'm obviously very happy, and no matter what happened, I think there are three winners in this race. It's uh, Brunel, Mafre, and Dongfeng Race Team, because we show each of us different skill. And I'm really happy, and yes, the, the, the best, you know, best teams should win, but I think three of the teams have done a fantastic job. And you are, you've been running this team for two campaigns now. This is your second campaign. You came third in the last edition of the Volvo Ocean Race. Is this going to be a first place for Dom Fong? I don't know. I don't want to. I'm not watching my app since this morning. I'm not looking at anything. I'm too nervous for that. I was going to say, I was chatting to one of your shore team earlier, and they said they hadn't eaten since this morning because they're walking around feeling slightly crazy. So we are going to let you get back on the rib. We know you don't have much time. We're going to let you get back out there with Dongfeng Race Team, and uh, best of luck. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Back to you now. Uh, thanks, Amy. Bruno Dubois down on the dock with Dongfeng Race Team uh, supporters. And, you know, Annie, we know that they're doing well, but as we take a look at the, the 3D tracker, the breeze does not have to change too much for Dongfeng Race Team to start to feel the pressure of Mafre, Team Brunel, Team Axenabel coming in from the left-hand side, does it? I mean, we're looking at the tracker right now and they're going the same speeds and uh, equidistant. So, I mean, really, we're just waiting for someone to flinch here. But um, Brunel looked like they were quite settled there. They were definitely spying over to their starboard side, looking out at Map Free and Team Brunel. But I don't know. I started to see a bit of confidence on board. What do you think? And I think the big thing here, you know, we can't stress this enough, that what we're seeing here from Dongfeng Race Team is real bravery in tactics. It took a, a steel nerve to, to break away from the rest of the fleet, decide, no, no, we know something that you don't. That inside route is going to pay. It looks like it's going to come to fruition, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, that took so much courage. At one point, that then had them sort of 45 miles behind, having been right at the front. So, yeah, absolute courage by the navigator and, and the skipper and, well, all the team, but certainly the decision makers. And also to convince your crew on deck that you're making the right decision when they can see every sked that comes in, you're losing miles. Um, but just to know you're going to reap it all back at the end. And this mark, mark number three that you can see on the middle of your screens at the moment, that is their next turning mark. They're going to leave it on the right-hand side. So Dongfeng Race Team, they're going to go straight past it, straight on to the finish. Mafre, Team Brunel, Team Axanabel, they're going to have to jibe round that mark to go in. And you could argue, really, that the extra jibes that those boats uh, to the top of the screen at the moment, those extra jibes, that, that has cost them. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Yeah, they've got to keep jibing, and, you know, jibing is, is not... 
it's not particularly slow, but it's you know not as not as fast as going straight. And the other thing is they have to contend with each other. In fact, Dong Fong have a bit of an advantage here because they're just out there by themselves, which means they don't have to fight each other to get down to that mark. Well, you say out there by themselves, but they've already picked up a couple of other boats uh, in tow. There's a spectator fleet coming out. That's going to grow and grow as we get into the finish line here in The Hague. The crowd right now, they are all looking up at the screens, watching exactly the same images that you are as well, because it is nail-biting stuff. If you picked up the tracker, if you dialed into the action of the race course about half an hour ago, you would not know who it was that was going to be sitting on that stage. But this is what is awaiting for the sailors right now. The finish line just out of shot on the right hand side. And you can see why everybody's starting to pick up the best spots on the beach, ready to see. Well, is it going to be Dongfeng Race Team? Is it going to be Team Brunel? Is it going to be Team Axenabel or Mafre that make their way in? And Annie, let's just start bringing in a couple of other boats uh, to this right now. Dongfeng Race Team, as you say, they're looking quite confident. If their side of the course does pay, also on that side is Turn the Tide on Plastic and Sun Hong Kai Scallywag. Yeah, and this is a very important leg for them. This will decide for them, or for Turn the Tide on Plastic, this is an opportunity to not be last on this leaderboard. Um, they actually need Vestas or someone from that other side to come in and get between them and Scallywag to, to write this off for them now, to put them ahead of Scallywag overall. So, um, actually quite a lot to happen for all of these boats. And it's not inconceivable to think that, that Turn the Tide on Plastic as we go on board with them now could, just like we've seen with Dongfeng Race Team, make up that, that miles and come very much into the group. So it really could be all about this last mark, this last jibe, the final turn before the last two or three miles into the finish line. And Anna, you know these Volvo Ocean 65s extremely well. You did the last edition on Team SCA. You did this edition on Team Brunel. So just, just talk us through the sailors that we can see and, and what they're doing from those positions. Yeah, so here we can see Turn the Tide on Plastic. It's a great angle they are, they're at here. You know, it's a nice, fast angle. We can see they're going 17 knots. And um, it's, it's tricky when you're triple heading to be able to fist all the sails in, so it requires quite a lot of trimming. Uh, you can see a lot of you know, trimming going on in the middle there. You've got to make sure that they're not interfering each other, but if you get the setup right, then it's the most powerful setup you can have. And that's going to be key, isn't it? Because we know that it's going to be close and it could come down to single boat lengths, of course. And turn the tide on plastic. Right now, they are ahead of Sun Hunkai Scallywag and that's crucial for their battle. But ideally, they do need a boat to get in between them and David Witt's team. Dong Fong Race team on the tracker at the moment, being ranked into fourth spot. Earlier on, they were up into first. So it is changing all the time. It is going to come down onto those little gusts. And let's just talk about what's at stake for that left-hand group, Mafre, right now, they are leading that group. Whatever boat, Mafre, Dongfeng Race Team, Team Brunel, whatever boat of those three crosses the finish line ahead of the others, they are going to lift the overall Volvo Ocean Race Trophy. But of course, we've also got two Dutch teams in this competition as well. Team Brunel, they are going for the overall win, but there's a little mini battle here. Who's going to be the first Dutch team? Is it going to be Team Brunel or Team Axenabel that lead into The Hague? Yeah, there are so many different battles going on in this race course right now. I mean, it would be exciting if we just had these three, but then we've also got the guys coming from the other side. And don't forget as well, we've got a Dutch sailor on Dongfeng race team. We've got Caroline Bauer as well. So uh, the Dutch fans here are very excited for this, this finish. I mean, there's going to be a Dutch person or a few, quite a lot of Dutch people on the podium, whatever happens here. And we're going on board at the moment with Dongfeng Race Team. Speed down at the bottom left-hand side, 14 knots. That's absolutely crucial if you are fans of the Chinese boat here. They need to keep that speed up. They are right on the wire coming in here. We've got a little bit of distance to go before that final turning mark. But crucially, Dongfeng Race Team, but it looks like they're not going to have to do that jibe. And if they've got the ley line, correct if they don't have to bear away and lose power. That's going to be a big gain to them. Yeah, I mean, the other thing that we can't see here in Ireland, we can't see on the tracker is, you know, it's the current, it's the tide here, and we have, we have a lot of that. Um, that is really affecting the boats trying to sail downwind um, because they're basically an adverse current, and that's what's made it hard with these jibes. It's very hard to find this ley line. Well, Team Axenabel, they have jibed over, and for very good reason. That's at the moment at the top of the screen, at the top of the tracker. Mafre, they're ranked in first place. Team Axenabel, they were ahead of them not that long ago. It looks to me like they're trying to jibe down and maybe regain control of that pack. 
yeah, it's so tough because they're fighting this tide. They're, you know, they're trying to get that ley line, but it, it's pushing them up away from the ley line. Um, and uh, certainly to get into that lured position will put, you, put them into a strong position and be able to sort of keep control of this group. And it's really tough because Matt Free and Team Brunel don't really want Axanova to get in the <laughs> middle of them here. You know, they're in their own race for the overall win. Well, we've just been joined here in the uh, commentary studio. We've just been joined by Dan Portman, uh, a member of Team Brunel in the last edition of the race. And, uh, you know, well, let's just start. We, we almost don't really want to take our eyes off this unbelievable race that we're seeing out there. So you've organised this stopover. I mean, did you have any idea that it was going to be this exciting all the way down to the finish? Of course not. <laughs> no, we hope for it and we joke about it, but this is absolutely unbelievable. I mean, uh, history is written today and uh, uh, I say we deserve it, but uh, no, it's, I, I can't believe it, simply. And, and what's your take about what we're seeing in terms of the differing tactics? Dong Fong race team on that inshore course. Uh, who do you think's got this one? Well, you know, last night, they said, what are they doing? You know, flipping the coin and see what happens. And uh, they took a big risk of leaving the competition go. Uh, and, uh, but they calculate this, you know, they know what route they're going to take, what, what conditions they will get, they, will, they know the performance from the other boats, so they know when they make that choice that, that it's going to be close. They know that much better than we do, they're much better than we. Um, but still, you know, it's, it's, it's a gamble and now it's paying off and I guess, I guess it uh, took a, a gamble to win this race this time. And as Annie was saying before, there's so many mini battles going on right now. We've got a helicopter at the moment following uh, Mafre right now. So this is the group that's coming in from offshore and crucial, Team Axinabel, a big cross coming up here, Annie. Yeah, I mean, this could be a cross for the leg win and this would be huge for Team Axinabel. Mapfree, maybe a leg win doesn't matter so much. They just need to be ahead of Dong Kong race team and Team Brunel. But for Team Axe and Obel, a win into The Hague. I mean, this would be fantastic for them, wouldn't it, here, John? Oh, yeah, brilliant. I mean, they fully deserve it as well. They had a tough race uh, with, with the breakdowns in the Southern Ocean, and they really had a strong comeback and, uh, a, a, ex a, you know, excellent results with the, with the 24-hour world record. And uh, to uh, have a race win on, uh, on this race it would be fantastic. But don't forget, first place is up to stake, but second and third as well. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's still much better to become second than third. So all these boats are fighting for their lives. And it, what, what do we think here about the positioning of Team Max and Nobel? They, they put in that, that two jibes. They've now set themselves up, as we can see on the tracker, they set themselves up just to windward of, of Mafre. A, a strong position? Well, it's, it's always better, really, to set yourself up on someone's hip than to cross behind them. So potentially they thought that they would be crossing behind Map Free, and almost that means you're kind of giving it to them. So if Axon Noble think here that they're going to get a bit more breeze, perhaps as they come inshore and it might push them down, they might lay. And this is exactly what Mafre don't want here. They don't need Team Axanabel coming into this battle as well because behind them we have got Team Brunel. They are trying to chase down that group. And as we have a look, as we zoom in on, on the tracker right now, Dongfong Race Team going out of shot on the right. We'll dial in with them in just a moment. But look at this. Mafre, Team Axanabel ahead of Team Brunel. And Bauer Becking desperately needs that situation to turn around. He's not concerned with Team Axanabel apart from, of course, the leg win. Really, he's thinking about the Volvo Ocean Race Trophy and lifting that, if he can, overtake Mafra and Dongfong Race Team. Yeah, and it's, they're running out of opportunities here. I mean, uh, the mark they can see, probably, and uh, they're stuck between two boats. And uh, don't forget, these guys haven't been sleeping for three days. And this is the mental part of the Volvo Ocean Race. That is, you've been fighting so hard, you're thinking, you know, uh, uh, 80,000 kilometers. We've, we, we, we've sailed and we've tried so hard, and then it comes down to these bloody last two hours. I mean, I'm going nuts, you know, and then when you're tired, that, that, that really amplifies. And uh, so it's, it's tough on board of Brunel, I can tell you that. And Annie, I mean, we just saw a minute ago on the tracker and now we're getting live images from the helicopter. I mean, their speed is a little bit down. I mean, really, we need to start seeing, with the amount of miles left, we need to start seeing them one, two knots faster than Mafre if they want to turn this around. Yeah, I mean, as Herjohn says, the options are closing out, but there could still be another sail peel in here. And, and as you said, they're very tired. And they're not just tired from this leg, they're tired from the last 45,000 miles around the world. I mean, don't forget that. Yeah. We started this race in October, and I don't know about you, now, but that feels like a lifetime ago to me now. I mean, it's incredible when we talk about how much has changed 
in that year. I mean, we've had Nico London on board Turn the Tide on Plastic. He's had, he's had a baby. I mean, his family has grown in that time. But right now, the only thing that Bauer Becking, the skipper of Team Brunel, will be thinking is just ahead of him, there are a couple of boats. And that is all that stands between him and finally lifting that Volvo Ocean Race trophy. I mean, Bert, you, you sailed with Bauer Becking on the last edition of the race. I mean, you've got yeah. to know how much this would mean to him. Yeah, everything, the world. I mean, his whole life has been uh, Volvo Ocean Race. I mean, we do this year race for a few years and we go on and do other things, but he, he's literally achieved his whole life sailing this light, uh, race, and, 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 and that's going to be tough on him, but he's, he, he knows w w what it's what about, and, uh, uh, you know, he'll, uh, he'll uh, give uh, uh, the guys on Dong Fong a hug and, uh, and Mafra a hug and say, listen, at the end of the day, we worked really hard, we tried everything we could, we gave it everything, and this is what it is. But, of course, we should mention, of course, some of the finishes that we've seen in this edition of the race. I mean, let's remember Newport, where Mafre yeah. beat Team Brunel. It came down to 61 seconds. So, I mean, Annie, even though Bauer Becking at the moment sees boats in between him yeah. and, his, and his dream, it could still yeah. turn around. He's got to be thinking positively. Yeah, I mean, this is definitely not over yet. Um, there's, you know, there's a jibe to do, there's potentially a peel to do, um, and a lot can happen. And... Uh, to be honest, I don't think anyone on board right now is thinking about the overall win. I mean, if I was on board right now, you're just trimming whichever sail you're trimming for maximum speed. You're driving and you're 100% focused on just trying to get every single thing you can out of the boat. It's actually a bit easier to be on board, I think, than it is watching. I'm more nervous watching. I think, I think Brunel needs uh, Mufford to make one bad jive and they're pretty close to overtaking him. And it's pretty easy to make one bad jive. And Dong Fong too, but I don't think they've got any jobs left. But, uh, you know, but it, it's dead easy to lose this race. And, you know, we, we saw the crew uh, on the deck at the moment. I mean, we can see they're all plainly aware that Mafre is just ahead of them. No surprise to see more than just the watch up on deck. I mean, by my eye, there are seven crew members up on deck. I mean, no one's sleeping at this point. No, I don't think they'll be sleeping. Uh, they've been, I've been, uh, the whole crew been on, on, dock, on deck the whole day. Since the, they started jiving at the corner of the exclusion zone, everybody was awake in the gear. Uh, if they had the gear on from the finish, to be honest. But, uh, yeah, full on. I'm not actually sure if anyone's been sleeping for the whole leg, though. I mean, I think this is one of those classic legs where the navigator said at the beginning, well, it could be three days, that's too long to not sleep. We should go into the watch system at this point. And then you just never do. I um, mean, there were so many tacks at the beginning and there's been so many decisions to make that... I don't know if anyone slept. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there's so many battles going on here on the, on the race course. Let's just, just quickly uh, remind ourselves exactly what's at stake. One, two, and three, all of those positions are going to be hard fought. And then, of course, we've got Turn the Tide on Plastic and Sun Hunkai Scallywag as well. And, and they've got to get a little bit of a boat between them there. There's a, there's a points difference there. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, an important battle going on there. And let's not forget Team Axe Noble for the overall win and into their, you know, their home port. I think they were training here, weren't they, yeah. here, John? And yeah. so important for them to, to come in here and, you know, first on the podium. Might not be overall, but it's still really important. And this is be the boat that they will be keeping an eye on. Uh, Sun Hunkai Scalawag right now are chasing Di Kafari's turn the tide on plastic. And uh, Annie here, just talk us through. It's a bit of activity on the side of the boat, changing the stack. Yeah, Sticking it looks on. like a bit of a stack shuffle there. Um, this is actually what we spend most of our time doing around the world. And um, <laughs> essentially, it's up to sort of 100 kilos per sail once they're wet. And uh, we're moving them a lot. And it's not only side to side, it's also fore and aft for the trim of the boat. Um, so they're doing a little stack shuffle. Potentially they need to be making sure that their next sail is on top. They might need to peel as they come around this mark. So it's not just about moving the heavy weight. They're also having to think pretty tactically here about, well, I'm guessing just trying to find that last little bit of energy. You don't want to do something where you just tie yourself just before the finish line, because of course, as we can see, still grinding, still working hard. Yeah, I, I always found that one of the hardest choices to make when you're coming to this finish, you're dead tired, you have to make choices on how much you can put in. You always put in all you can, but there's a limit. And then you, you make all these short turns, and then w w are we going to do 50-50 stack, or, you know, half, uh, half the whole thing, or are we going to do the whole thing? Or, you know, and this is hard because you, you know, the whole discussion on board and, and so on, and, and you need a strong skipper to just make the call there and, and go, uh, go for it. And, and that's clearly what's happening there. Everybody's in it. Uh, get it on the rail and, and get on with the job. 
Well, at the moment, that battle is going the way of Turn the Tide on Plastic, but ideally, they do want another boat to get in between them and Sun Hunkai Skellywag. Meanwhile, the race for first. Dong Fong Racing, mate, Annie, they're looking very comfortable right now. We know that those boats on the left have still got one more jibe to do, and right now, Dong Fong Racing seems to be crossing their line. Yeah, I mean, such a gain for them at the end here. You can just see the distance closing down, and, uh, you know, that's largely because they haven't had to jibe. They've just been pointing at the mark. And if you've been watching the tracker, you can see the VM. C numbers and that's been quite a telltale sign because Dongfong race team have been VMCing the same as their boat speed which means they're going pointing at the mark whereas the other boats have all had to jibe and so effectively they're sort of going half the speed they want to be towards that finish line towards that mark so um, they're reaping their rewards right now but wow what a ballsy call that was a, a, absolutely incredible, real guts. And uh, just, just paint a picture for us here. When you're on that boat, I mean, how difficult is it to make a call and say, you know what, we need to go the other way from everybody else. We need to break away. We've got a game plan. It doesn't matter if anyone else follows us. It took me about an hour to convince myself last night to, that they did this. You know, that they had the, <laughs> the balls to, to let them go uh, on the other side and, and go and do it. And that's how hard it is, I think. And uh, I, I wasn't sure if, if they were forced to do so, because sometimes you can be in sight of each other, maybe only a few hundred meters on the, on the higher side, and you're in different wind. And, and maybe it was the case uh, that Mafra was able to go sail higher towards Br uh, Brunel, uh, and Dongfeng wasn't. So they were in a situation that they had no choice then then to go ahead and do that. I don't know, you have to be on the water to make that, that, that uh, uh, observation. But uh, if it was clear cut like that, <laughs> you know, um, you have to be pretty sure about your, uh, your calls. Well, it's worked out incredibly well for them. I mean, on the tracker right now, we're seeing the, the graphical confirmation of their hard work coming to fruition. Dongfeng race team now closest to the shore, laying the finish line at the moment. 15 knots of boat speed. And Annie, they are looking very good right now. There's no hint of the breeze dying for them. No, I mean, we're, we're sat here, we can feel the breeze. And as you said, we're really close to that finish mark. So it seems like that this wind is going to hold to the finish now. Um, you can see them all hiking on the side. You know, they're just trying to get every last inch out of the boat they can there. And they've got the free sails on the, on the front. And the other boats can't do that because they're going dead downwind. So they, they're still jiving. And these guys are, are actually sailing higher than downwind. So they're faster. And. Uh, the first Dutch woman to win the Volvo Ocean Race. <laughs> <laughs> I hope. Do you know what? We, look, we, say that yet. we, we cannot say that yet. We're going to jinx them. Uh, <laughs> we've got in so much trouble jinxing it before. I'm refusing to do it right now. But you That's know, this what I do it. <laughs> we've got a backup plan, you see. <laughs> but this must have been, I mean, for fans of Dongfeng Race Team, I mean, the sailors on board as well, when they did do that breakaway, I mean, it must have been so hard to see the miles initially gaining the other teams. It's only been in the last, what, two, three hours that they've started to feel themselves coming back into this? Yeah, I mean, not even that, I think. I mean, I think two hours ago, we were still doubting if it was going to be possible. It looked like they'd lost too much distance. But I don't know, something we always say in sailing is, you know, a decision is better than no decision. And of course, yeah, the right decision is the best one, but actually just making a decision. And to me, it looked like on the tracker, Dong Fong actually made that decision a long time out and they've just stuck to it. They haven't wavered from it. And, you know, every inch that they didn't waste sort of second guessing themselves is going towards getting them to this mark first. OK, well, it looks, I mean, we're not going to confirm this right now, but it looks like Dong Fong race team uh, well, it's theirs to give it up right now. They need to keep themselves sailing pretty steady. Uh, so let's just go and remind ourselves with Mafre and Team Axenabel and Team Brunel, there's still very much the battle for second and third place. And we're not just talking on this leg, we are talking about the overall scores. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I keep reminding. I've said so many times amazing today. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, it's crazy, but uh, yes. And, and they still have, have uh, one or two jibes to go. I'm not sure, you know, I quite like to see Bauer to try to try something more to, to try to extend. You know, if you're behind, you want the race to take as long as possible. So anything you try is, is, is to make it longer. Well, and now we can see as the helicopter comes down low, confirmation of just how well that hard work and that bravery has paid off for Dong Fong Race Team. There you can see their closest rival, Mafre, and they, I mean, in terms of crosses, this is about as easy a cross as you're going to do. Yeah, I mean, but... 
it, it must be amazing on board Dolphin right now because Pascal, the navigator, must have been trying to convince everyone for the last sort of 48 hours that his you know, decision is right. Um, and finally, he can actually point at the boat and they can see them. But remember, they haven't been able to see these other boats for the last 48 hours. I think more than that. Uh, they've been separated by this traffic, se traffic separation scheme. And uh, finally, they can see them and see this cross. It must be such relief, especially for Pascal. An absolutely hugely important moment for Dongfeng race team because now it is confirmed they are going into first place. They have got their competitors physically behind them. They know that there is nothing in between them and that finish line except their own sailing skill, their own ability to close down those last few miles and cross that finish line. Right now, the computer saying that Team Axinabel looks set to take second place on this leg with Mafre finishing in third. So if the boats finish in the positions that they are right now, it's going to be Dongfong Race Team taking the leg and taking the overall Volvo Ocean Race win. And I mean, Kurt, you've been, you've been following this edition of the Volvo Ocean Race. This has been topsy-turvy. I mean, boats at the front, at the back, but Dongfeng Race Team, they've been the only one that you could say has been in some way consistent. Yeah, and, and they haven't won a leg yet. <laughs> so this, you know, it's pretty good to, to finish with the last one. Yeah, every week since we started with the one design and, 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 and uh, with these boats, the race has been so immensely close and, uh, and challenged. It just shows level. Of, uh, of the competitors and uh, what I see here it's quite uh, amazing actually when, when you see the Dongfong sailors they're really uh, dressed up with big hats and so on for me that's a sign they're tired you know because when, you when you're tired you get cold yeah. that's just generally what's happening and uh, you know, these guys they, uh, they have a little bit less on maybe they, they got a bit more sleep which they did because they had to do a lot less tacking and jiving because they weren't sailing along the coast of, 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 the, of Holland of the islands. They're also younger than us here, John, so don't forget that. <laughs> <laughs> and the team. Well, that was just a little chance to check in with Team Brunel. They are chasing this boat here, but time is running out. Dongfeng race team right now, they have cleared the last turning mark. They have crossed the bows of all the other teams, and the spectators are being able to just shepherd them in. We know that that fleet's going to get bigger. We know that soon we're going to start hearing the roar of the Chinese fans here in the race village. I mean, Annie, they are looking very confident indeed. And we don't always see confidence from this team. I mean, Charles Cordrelli is a solo sailor when he's feeling down on the deck. I mean, he shared it among his teams. But they seem to have attacked this leg in just the right way. Yeah, and, and, and kind of in the same way that they have throughout the race and that they've just sort of stuck to what they think they should be doing. And they sail consistently. We haven't seen anything sort of blinding from them in terms of speed, but we haven't seen anything bad. And um, I remember Ian Walker saying at the end of the last race, when he won the last race, that this race is really about keeping focused and keeping consistent. And Dongfeng race team, they have done just that. And they've saved the best for last because, of course, Dongfeng race team, as we were saying, have not won a leg of the Volvo Ocean race yet. And a lot of people were saying, I mean, well, is this possible to win the Volvo Ocean race without winning a leg? Technically, it is, but they've decided, no, we're going to take both. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, they couldn't hope for anything better than to get a leg win. But at the end of the race, no one really remembers who won each leg. It's, it's all about the race win, and that is about consistency. And it's about not coming last. It's about not getting any high points on the board. And that is what they've managed to do all race. And it really is an incredible finish to well, all the teams, all the adventures that we've seen out there. And Dongfeng Race Team, at the moment, seem to be on their way to victory in this leg and the overall Volvo Ocean Race. Down on the water, we have got Nick Bice and Andy Green following in the Chinese boat. Let's get a little bit of reactions from the water. Yeah, so after a few hours of scanning the horizon, we finally saw two red sails coming across the horizon, one from each side, and now we're just witnessing Dong Fong sailing in to take this historic race. What a fantastic scene. And Nick, from where you are right now, I mean, in terms of conditions, is there anything that could upset the Chinese boat on their final push to the finish line? Well, I mean, they wouldn't have known this was going to happen for quite some time until they probably came in sight. Because with the skets, the way that they're set up, they don't have real-time skets either. Whilst we've got everything we can see on the, on the land, they don't know how good that is. But I'll tell you what, 
that would have been a welcome sight to see the other uh, the other Jennicas coming down and then to cross clear in front. And Andy, you've been following this race for the past eight, nine months. I mean, Dongfeng race team, they've really showed themselves to be a real contender you know, right from the first day. Yeah, they've battled through the entire race. And remember, they haven't won a leg in this entire thing. And this time will be the moment they get to break that duck. And it was because of the risk that they took going around that eastern uh, uh, separation zone. And I'm sure Marcel Van Trees, their onshore router, will have given them a lot of advice about that. Right now, we are just next to the boat. Pascal Bidegary, he is standing up and he is looking at his opposition as they pass by. And it is only a matter of uh, uh, less than a mile that they're crossing over the other two boats. Everything very calm on board Dongfeng race team, but they are still eyes forward looking for the finish. No celebration yet on board the Chinese team, but so, so exciting. What a finish. Oh, so many fans out there right now. We're seeing the helicopter images. I mean, the water looks white with the spectator fleet. There are probably uh, 200 boats here, all charging along at about 16 knots, keeping up with the winners right now. Uh, and it is a spectacular scene all around us. And the Dongfeng race team have finally nailed a win, perhaps here. I don't think there's much else to do because they've got about four miles to go to the finish. They're straight on in. Daryl Wislang just talking to Charles Cordrelier right next to him. Daryl is on the helm. It's about uh, 13 to 14 knots of breeze. They're triple bagged. They've got all the sails up they can for this angle, and they are putting the pedal down. Daryl Wislang driving right now. Beautiful scenes. It's slightly overcast, but a bit of sunshine. Perfect, perfect sailing conditions into The Hague. Oh, thanks, Andy and Nick. They're going to be uh, staying with us down on the water, bringing us reactions from Dongfeng Race Team and the other teams as they come in. But right now, Amy Monkman on the dock is with uh, Darren Vandock from Dongfeng Race Team. Let's hear from him. Darren, you're Carolyn's husband. I've just dragged you out of a very emotional team base. You're very emotional yourself. How are you feeling right now? There's just a few tiny miles to go. Yeah, it's, am it's amazing. Um, it is very emotional. Um, there's been so much going into this race. Um, and for Caroline and all the Dongfeng team, um, it's been a fantastic team that, the, that she's been involved with. Um, it was one of the first teams that approached her and she was very excited to be involved with Charles and also the, all of the Dongfeng team. So it's, um, it's fantastic and it's so close to the finish now. And if you take yourself back to that moment, would you have ever been able to predict this? Well, we always knew that they were going to be a strong team. Um, you know, they were, Dong Feng was so, so close to winning last time. Um, but yeah, this is just amazing, I guess, you know, especially for Caroline finishing in Holland with her being a Dutch. Um, it's, it's amazing for her, for sure. I was going to say, you know, Caroline better than absolutely anyone in the world. What do you think she is feeling right now? It's just for you to be in tears. Yeah, I like, yeah, I'm getting very emotional, so I'm sure she'll be in tears the time she gets in here, for sure. All right, well, we're going to let you get back because we can hear cheers from inside the team base, so that's it. But thank you. Back to you now. Oh, thanks, Amy. Dongfeng race team right now charging to the finish line in the distance on the helicopter shot. You can see their opposition, and it is going the way of the Chinese team as all of the miles start ticking away right now. Mafre in second place, two and a half nautical miles behind the leader, and we are approaching the finish line here. Mafre are just hoping and praying for Dongfeng race team to slip up in some way, but there doesn't seem to be any obstacles for Charles Cordrelia and his team. He has got the bow pointed to the finish line. The breeze are, is with them. They are pushing ahead and it looks like they are going to be able to cross this finish line with no one else. The beach here on The Hague with the race village is absolutely packed. Everybody is making their way down to the water's edge because just in front of all these thousands of spectators is the finish line. Dongfeng Racing is going to cross the line and are going to be able to hear the cheers from the shore of all the spectators that have come down here. I mean, Dongfeng Race Team entered this edition of the race with the clear intention of winning and nothing less 
Now they are approaching the line with 46,000 nautical miles of racing behind them. Just a few more miles to go as their fans and shore team are waiting for them to cheer them in and welcome the sailors after all the hard work that they have done. Charles Cordrelia is about to fulfill the goal that eluded him in the last edition. This time, even without winning a leg of the Volvo Ocean Race, they have fought doggedly to bring the competition down to the wire. Now it looks like they might finally get that leg won. Consistency in their results saw them push their team onto the top of the leaderboard. At times, they've had to step down again as their rival competitors found new ways to challenge the Chinese team. But Dongfeng race team never stopped improving. And now they just have to keep focus for the last push and the Volvo Ocean Race will be theirs. Dongfeng race team charging to the finish line. Nick Weiss, you're down there on the water. The finish line is getting ever close. Surely nothing is going to stop them from here. No, not at this point, except for Charles' small. I'll tell you what, it goes from France to China, the size of his small right now. He's handed the helm over to Daryl Wislang because I think he's just a bit too shaky to take it himself, to tell you the honest truth. Uh, Annie, I mean, we are just seeing these incredible scenes here. I mean, what is this going to mean as a sailor to win the Volvo Ocean Race? Charles Cordrelia, as a skipper, I mean, he's delivering all of this for his sponsor, the fan, the team. An incredible moment. Yeah, I, I feel emotional for them right now, and especially after last race. I and mean, that was his first race as a skipper. He'd already won with Group Armour, but he, you know, set up his own team. They put in such a good fight last race, only to have a disappointing end. And, um, I mean, you've seen the whole way through this campaign that they have such a tight team. I'm obviously very close to Caroline, and she's been talking about their team and just how well they work together and how well they're supported. And that's not just the sailors we see right now. That's their shore crew as well. And yes, you know, the people who look after the boat and the team, their chefs, when you go into their team base, it feels like a family. Well, Charles Cordrelia, the skipper, we can see him on the deck right now. There is the hint of a smile as he talks to Kevin Escoffier over his, his shoulder. But, I mean, I can see from his body language, he's still biting his fingernails. He doesn't want to hold on to this too close. He knows he has to cross that finish line before the celebrations can begin. Yeah, and, uh, you know, not a bad choice to have a Daryl Weisling on the helm there. I mean, you know, very experienced Volvo Ocean Racer, but also, from what I know of Daryl, he's pretty cool. And uh, he seems to be holding it together there. I've been mean, tough to steer this in right now. Well, Charles' partner waiting in the team base, ready to welcome not only the skipper, but the whole team in. It has been a very, very long competition. There they are there. Absolutely, we're all there with you, biting our nails as well. This is going to be very, very tense. The hard work seems to have been done, but they have to nudge this one over the peak of the hill. They have to sail those final short distance into the finish line. They've got to hold the boat together. The conditions couldn't be kinder, but I'm sure their nerves are going to be absolutely wrecked. And, I, and right now, we cannot forget the Chinese on board. This is such a moment for them to be winning this race. And, uh, and after a lot of hard work, this isn't just one campaign's worth. This is, you know, two campaigns worth of training and working with the Chinese sailors. And and what a result. I mean, you couldn't meet nicer guys than the, the Chinese on board this boat. And they have trained so hard to get to this point. Well, as Andy Green and Nick Bice were describing, I mean, the spectator fleet, it really is absolutely enormous right now. They have got a full hero's welcome for Dongfeng race team. At the moment, things have changed behind them with Team Axanabel and Mafray, but all eyes are on the Chinese boat right now. They have sailed the most consistent campaign of this edition of the Volvo Ocean Race. They started strong, they held into the mix. Even when Mafray started to falter in those middle legs, when boat issues forced them back uh, through the Southern Ocean, they didn't get the points that they wanted. Dongfeng Race Team still managed to fi finish strong, still managed to find the extra speed. Then it was Team Brunel starting to come up through, but now Dong Fong race team have thwarted all of them. They are out in the lead. And just look at how nice it is right now. We have not got Mafre, Team Brunel and Team Axanabel round that last turning mark. So surely right now, Dong Fong race team is looking very strong indeed. It's about four and a half miles to go for the finish. And the Chinese team are going to win this edition of the Volvo Ocean Race. An unbelievable welcome for this team. This is absolutely incredible. And there's no surprise the excitement in the fans here. And
Charles Codrelli was talking about, well, no skipper, no team member will have wanted this race to be so close. You'd want to have this all wrapped up, but this is going to make this win even extra special, surely? Yeah, I mean, no one wants a match race to finish, and a three-way match race is a sort of worst nightmare because you can't control everyone. Um, but in the end, it's gone in their favour, and yeah, you're right, it's going to make it even more special for him. And we only stopped in the Hague last race for about 24 hours, and I think they had to shut the gates because so many people were here cheering. I cannot imagine what the party's going to be like tonight, but um, certainly for Caroline Brown, this is going to be the night of her life, I think. <laughs> well, there you can see confirmation of just how close the finish line is to the race village here in The Hague. The finish mark, a cardinal just off from the harbour wall, and the fans on the beach will be able to cheer in Dong Fong Race Team. Team Axon and Bell, they look like they're starting to make their way in, but I can't see them going around the mark at the moment. They might just be trying to get the on the inside of Mafre and Team Brunel. Those two Dutch teams still going to be fighting out for who gets to be the first boat from the Netherlands into their home city. That is the view of the finish right now. All the surfers in the water with the yellow cardinal mark on the top right-hand corner. That is going to be one end of the finish line. The other end slightly further out to sea. Dongfong Race Team in the next few minutes is going to be crossing through that. And just look at it now, as we get the rib camera in close, we can see how close the beach is at the moment for Dongfong Race Team. Full power right now. Anybody that is sleeping on board this boat now will be woken up, up on deck. They will be ready for this moment. They will want to relive these last few miles again and again. These memories are going to pass on for a long time indeed. I doubt anyone's been sleeping on Dongfong since they, uh, you know, well, every scared for sure they'd have been awake over the last 48 hours, seeing if their, you know, very ballsy call has paid off. And, uh, well, these last few hours, I'm sure they've all just been watching, looking to their right to see if they can see those other boats. And that must have been an amazing feeling the first time they spotted them and seeing that they were crossing. And now if they look behind them, I mean, hundreds of spectators. Wow, well, hundreds cool of moment. spectators and, and also a change of helm as well. Charles Cordrelli, the skipper, has just taken the wheel. And I, I think we can understand why. A special moment after getting your team all the way around the world, an, an achievement in itself, an, an adventure like none other, and now in the race, firing on all cylinders, raising your game, finding those extra inches of speed, and Charles Cordrelia, the skipper of Dongfong Race Team, taking the wheel to steer this boat with all these spectator boats around them, welcoming them into The Hague here. The finish line is in front of them. And Andy Green, you're down on the water right now. Charles Cordrelia on the wheel. I mean, he's surely got to start smiling now. Oh, we're going to come back from Andy Green in just a moment for reactions from the water. Uh, Charles Cordrelia on the wheel. Andy, I mean, you've done countless races in your career in the Olympics and the Volvo Ocean Race. At what point do you start celebrating? <laughs> At what point does it feel like it's going to be real? Uh, to be honest, it, you know, I think for Charles, it's going to be when he crosses the line or it's going to be metres because you just, you just always fear that something could happen. And um, he's definitely looking, looking comfortable, but... Yeah, he's not going to start. You're not going to see any fist bumps, I think, until he gets across that line. It's 45,000 nautical miles, but so much happens in this race and sometimes in the very small millimetres of the race. So, uh, yeah, not yet. But, I mean, great to see him on the helm. I think he, I think Daryl probably would have made him get on the helm. <laughs> <laughs> well, Andy Green, uh, we can go to him now. He is down there. Andy, we've only got one question. Is Charles Codrelia smiling yet? Charles is just about smiling, but I tell you, there are still serious faces on board. Stu Bannatyne, the laconic Kiwi, he just won the Newport Bermuda race, but this is going to add to his trophy cabinet for the Volvo Ocean Race. We are surrounded by white water. It is bedlam out here. There's a flotilla of support boats all chasing Dongfong Race Team. We're doing about uh, 14, 15 knots. It's quite the sight. But still, on board, there is a very calm way. Daryl Wisland just going up forwards just to check the trim on the J2 and the J3. They want to race right to the finish for sure, even though they've got a decent lead now. And I tell you, the uh, nerves of steel that it took them to make that decision to go around the eastern separation zone 
into Rotterdam was quite the move of the match. And it's been a 45,000 mile match race. And the atmosphere down here is electric. It's fantastic as they sail along. And Charles Cordrelli is just taking a laugh, having a moment to enjoy it with his crew while he's still on the race course before they get down to the finish. Only a few boat lengths to go. Remember, this has been in the making for six years at least. They were disappointed uh, with their finish for the last Volvo Ocean race, and they've been stalking. They've been ca they've been stalking Matt Frey all the way through this event. They haven't ever won. They haven't ever been superstar. And this is the moment where they pulled it all together. They're going to win the leg, and with the leg, they're going to win the trophy. Epic. Now, thank you, Andy. Dongfong race team now around three and a half nautical miles to the finish. This is what is waiting for them. We have got an absolutely full flotilla of spectator boats out in the water. We have got thousands of fans here lining the beach in The Hague, ready to cheer them in. A very much a fitting tribute to all of our seven teams. A lap of the planet completed. The final battle coming right the way down to those last few miles. Charles Quadrilla now on the helm of Dongfong race team, ready to complete this leg, to complete this edition of the Volvo Ocean Race and to complete an incredible journey. His partner waiting for him in the team base, friends, family, all there. It is such an unbelievable team effort. Everybody involved is going to be celebrating this moment for Dongfong race team as they come into the finish line here. And Annie, I mean, we have got so many sailors on board this boat worthy of mention as well. Of course, a Chinese team, two young Chinese sailors, part of the team as well. I mean, one edition ago, they were complete novices. Now they're going to be champions of the Volvo Ocean Race. Yeah, and they fully deserve it. I mean, you, you haven't met guys who work as hard and are as nice at the same time. And um, I don't know, they probably had to learn French as well. I'm not quite sure what happened on board, but certainly it must have been tricky for them. You know, two very different cultures, um, and they've managed to build this team. And those Chinese sailors have had to work so hard. They had so much to learn, as you said. And this has not just been this campaign. It's been two campaigns worth of work, and it's paid off. Well, Dongfeng race team right now in first place, and I think fairly safe to say that they look like they're going to be able to take this leg win and the Volvo Ocean Race trophy. But behind them, there is still a battle raging. Team Axenabel in second place, are absolutely locking horns with Mafre at the moment. They are neck and neck round that final turning mark. Just behind them, we have Team Brunel. Then it's Vestas 11th Hour Racing still to come in. Turn the tide on plastic and Sun Hunkai Skellywag. Let's just go on board right now with Team Axenabel. They are just ahead of Spanish boat and Mafre. And for Team Axel they look set to be the first Dutch team into the Hague here. And for Simeon, Team Point, you've walked away with a 24-hour Volvo Ocean Race speed record. And now you're going to be leading out of the two Dutch boats into your home port. That's a very special way to wrap up this edition. Yeah, a really important moment here for this team. And um, yeah, they probably cannot wait to get to the shore here to greet their family and friends and, and their shore crew. And, you know, they had a tough start, this team, and they've shown massive strength. Um, they've had a leg win. They've won the 24 hour record. And don't forget, we've still got the import race to go. And uh, this team's on the podium for that as well. Um, there's still a lot to fight for. So um, they're going to be very excited to be on the podium here. A Dongfong race team pushing away in first place. Behind them, Team Brunel, the team that with their incredible finish into Gothenburg leveled the scores for this final push to that last finish line in the Hague. But sadly, it doesn't look like it's going to go their way. Mafre is still some way ahead. Bauer Becking, his eighth attempt to try and win the Volvo Ocean Race. And it looks like it's going to be a third place finish for Team Brunel. There's still some miles to go. Anything could happen. We've seen it all before in the incredibly close finishes that we've been, well, come to be unbelievably familiar with throughout the 11 legs of the Volvo Ocean Race. But Dongfong Race Team have got a wall of spectator boats, hundreds of fans out there on the water, shielding Dongfong Race Team shepherding them in. We've got thousands of fans on the beach as well. They are getting ever closer now to that line. They're going to cross the finish line, winning this leg, winning the Volvo Ocean Race trophy. Then it's just a short hop to the dock 
where they will be awarded with the overall Volvo Ocean Race Trophy. Charles Cordrelia tried to win it last time around. And, you know, Annie, he came very close last time as well. I mean, some mass damage in the Southern Ocean. That put him on the back foot. But apart from that, he was always fast. Yeah, I mean, they were a force to be reckoned with. And they seemed to have an extra gear in the last race. I mean, there were a number of times we just watched them sail through to lured of, of us and the rest of the fleet. And we didn't know what they were doing. Um, and he was sort of, you know, the rookie skipper on the race course and I think Ian Walker was definitely always looking over his shoulder at him and uh, they were in a tight battle until the finish, until the near the end. Um, but wow, it must be amazing on board right now. They probably cannot wait to get to that dock and I know that for me it was always about wanting to see my shore crew and thank them and uh, it's going to be a big moment when they get to hug the rest of their team here. Well, the fans on the beach, the fans in the race course, and of course the spectators out in the water, they will be nervous as well. As we just saw, we know that the shore team and the families are. And why? I mean, there's nothing to stop them from crossing the finish line. Well, the reason is there's so much at stake. This means so much. The race is so long. You're talking about a year of your life. And it comes down to these final few miles. So much sacrificed for just this moment. Yeah, and it's not even just a year, Niall. I mean, it's a year of your life where you're completely away. But this team were training for a year before that, and they were actually competing in the race before that. I mean, it's it's a lifetime work for Charles Cordelia and his team. And, uh, you know, all of these sailors have been have done a number of laps of this planet. Um, and it's taken that long and this much work to get to this point. So, yeah, it's a hugely important moment for them. A full complement of crew for Dog Dogfront Race team up on deck at the moment to share this historic finish of the Volvo Ocean Race. They look good, they've got full power, their angle into the finish here. It's faster, it's more efficient than Team Axinabel, Mafre or Team Brunel. They have been able to sail quicker, faster to the finish line and that really has sewn up this race. But that move was done 24 hours ago when they decided to take the inshore course. An incredible feat of bravery from Pascal Badigari, the navigator, as he comes out of the hatch at the moment, just with a little bit of a briefing to the crew, delivering what I can only imagine to be incredibly good news. We're faster, we're sailing to the finish. Nothing can stop us now. Just don't let go of these ropes. Don't take your hand off the wheel. <laughs> Actually, to be honest, he's probably trying to help get them to help him work out where the finish line is. And that sounds crazy, <laughs> but it's actually very hard. As you come into the land here, there's so many spectator boats, which is fantastic, and there's so much going on. It can actually be hard to find the finish line and make sure you do finish correctly. That's their final hurdle here. They do need to get across that line and make sure they finish correctly. <laughs> I think you might be trying to find it. Well, down on the water, we have the help of uh, Andy Green. Uh, Andy, we where is this finish line? How close is it going to be to Dongfang Racing? Do you have a clear view? Yes, we do. We've got a clear view of the finishing line and they are all checking it out. Caroline Brewer just uh, pointing out exactly where the finishing line is. It's only around a mile to go. So we got around five or six minutes until they get to the finish. Uh, they're still definitely staying focused. There are lots of boats all uh, zigging and zagging right behind the boats. Also, the when the boat gets hit with the puff, because there are so many waves out here and a very short chop, it's really easy for the boat just to get taken with some of the uh, weight from the big boats around and just getting moved one way to the other. There are plenty of people happy about it. We've got uh, horns going off already. Charles Cordrelier looks calm and relaxed. And for all of those of you sitting at home, we're just trying to give you some of the feel of the excitement as they go for rolling up the J2. So now I reckon they feel like they're pretty comfortable here. For all of those of you sitting at home, I can tell you it is fantastic. It's electric and we're out here on the water enjoying this moment. We hope you've all been enjoying following the tracker on this nail biting finish never before seen in ocean racing history. We're loving it down here. So exciting, such great racing. Oh, Andy, we are seeing incredible scenes right now on the water. So many spectators out there following everybody. But Annie, as you just say, something very interesting happening on the bottom of the screen here on the, tri on the ticker. Yeah, I'm having a little mini celebration here um, for Turn the Tide on Plastic, a big moment. They've managed to get Vestas 11th Hour Racing in between them and Tungan Kai Scallywag. And, you know, this could be a massive moment for them. This is the difference between the wooden spoon and, and coming sixth, and that's going to be huge for this team. 
Well, we're going to keep an eye on what happens at the back of the fleet. We're going to stay on air, welcoming all the teams in because there are battles raging from front to back in this fleet. Every one of our teams out in the water today wants to stamp their authority on this race. They want to go out in style, but it is all going to be about Dongfeng racing. That's going to be the big story of the day. And for every good reason, Charles Cordrelia took on a, a huge responsibility, bringing ocean offshore sailing to China. In the last edition of the race, he built a very strong team, very ambitiously took on inexperienced Chinese crew members. They proved their worth. He's pulled them back on board the team again, and now they're going to wrap up this edition of the race as Volvo Ocean Race Champions. And as we go on board with Dongfeng Race Team, every single crew member is up on deck right now. They've got a little bit of a look underneath. And look at what's behind them, chasing them down, but it's too little, too late. Team Axinabel just ahead of Mafre. That's going to be crucial. If Team Axinabel can keep pushing down, they're going to be the first touch team into The Hague ahead of Team Brunel. Dongfeng race team are just experiencing a hero's welcome into this line right now. Sailing boats, power boats, ribs. We've seen surfboards out in the water, kite surfers as well. Everybody is out there and they are about to come across this finish line at the moment. Dongfeng race team pushing towards the finish line. For this, the final leg of the Volvo Ocean Race, nothing was certain when the boats left Gothenburg. Three boats could have risen to the top. But this last sprint to the final finish line has been the deciding factor. The final leg of the Volvo Ocean Race has delivered an exceptional display of just how hard a team has to fight to preserve. No rest, no calm, no let up. Dongfeng race team have earned this moment in the bleak Southern Ocean, in the sweltering doldrums, and now in the closest finish in the race's history. Dongfeng race team have risen to the top. Well, thousands of fans on the beach right now. Annie, Charles Cordrelia, he is about to cross this finish line. He is about to be deafened by the roar of the crowd. And I'm sure the celebrations are going to continue for days. Yeah, I mean, what a moment for him. And it's been interesting because over the last couple of legs, I've heard people, a lot of people saying, well, they think it's between Matt Frey and, um, and Team Brunel, just because both of those have shown something exceptional in one or other of the legs. And people felt that Dong Pong race team had shown something exceptional, but what well, they underestimated is the consistency that's needed in this race. And you know, Charles Cordolier has built such a strong team. They are like a family. And in the end, that's what's carried them to this finish line. And how amazing for them to get their leg win when they actually need it. I mean, they've absolutely nailed this. A Dongfeng race team came into this edition of the race firmly with the intention of walking away with the Volvo Ocean Race Trophy. It was a big, ambitious aim with teams like Team Brunel and Math Ray pulling them back at every corner. But Charles Cordrelia has built an incredibly strong team and they have pushed ahead. Now they are about to cross the Imarsat finish line and an historic finish to an exceptional journey as they cross the Imarsat finish line. Victory in the Volvo Ocean Race goes to China. It goes to skipper Charles Cordrelia and his team. It goes to Dongfeng Race Team. Celebrations on board for Dongfeng Race Team. Charles Cordrelia punching the air. Finally, he has realized his dream. He has led this team around the world, beating the opposition, outsmarting their rivals at every turn. Leg 11 was no different. Celebrations for the Shore team. Happy to see their team, their hard work paying off now. Charles Cordrelia crosses the finish line. And how apt here, Annie, a hug for his tactician, his teammate, his friend, Pascal Badigri, the man that arguably made the winning move on this leg. Yeah, I mean, it would have been the two of them and uh, they would have been, you know, well, the last 48 hours would have been so stressful for them and trying to reassure the team that this is the right call when they're losing sight of those other boats for the last 48 hours. I mean, that's so tough, um, but it's paid off. And, you know, they're true offshore sailors. Charles Cordolier also comes from the Figaro and uh, they know how to make these offshore easy calls and it's worked. 
Tears for the friends, tears for the family, celebrations for the spectators on shore. Andy, you're down there on the water. There is a hero's welcome waiting for the crew when they get ashore. But right now, celebrations on board, and rightly so. Well, Chen Jin Hao giving it big beans, the Chinese sailor who has gone from rookie to champion. Also, magic moments, as you say, when Pascal Bidegary hugged his skipper, Charles Cordrelier, and there was more than just uh, friendship in that. There was battle, that was journey, and then finally it was victory. Caroline Brower now just taking the, uh, the huge cheers of the Dutch fans. Uh, incredible atmosphere down here on the water, and it is wonderful to see the scenes of celebration for the Dongfong race team. Who would have thought it would come down to this after 45,000 miles of racing, all down to the last 700 mile sprint, and then only a mile or two in it right at the end. There'll be some disappointed teams, but they've all sailed amazingly. And what a performance that we've been all able to enjoy. There, Charles Cordrelier lifting his arms in victory. Finally, he can relax. He is in such an intense character. Look at Carolyn, amazing. She is so happy. There are tears, there are cheers. It is a wonderful scene. What a celebration. Well done, Dongfong race team. And history being made here. Carolyn Brower, Justin Matru, Mary Rue, Annie. We've got a female winner of the Volvo Ocean Race, three of them in the squad of Dongfong Race Team, and they are now making their way into the, to the finish line here for Carolyn Brower, extra special being a Dutch sailor sailing into her home port. I mean, this yeah. is an incredible fairy tale story. Uh, I can't wait to hug yeah. them, and uh, fantastic for Caroline Marie and Juju, Justine Meto, um, all amazing sailors. I've been fortunate enough to sail with all of them, tour them around the world, and Marie Maria as well in, in a number of offshore races and um, such incredible sailors. Um, we just saw Kyle, Caroline's son, having a little celebration as well, and he's been following his mum around the world since he was two, uh, and so he would look very excited to be able to hug her with a win there. Well, the rest of the team have made their way on board from the team rib that's been chasing the boat in over the last few miles. Everybody's on board now to join in the celebrations. Leo Schuer making his way through. Kevin Escoffier sharing a hug. And just look at what is waiting for him. These are all the fans that have been out here in the race village all day vying for the best vantage spot of the finish line. Dongfong Race Team, the first boat to cross the finish line, wins leg 11 wins this edition of the Volvo Ocean Race, and Carolyn Brower is about to walk ashore to a hero's welcome here in The Hague to round up this edition of the Volvo Ocean Race for her. She now is about to step ashore as the first female to win the Volvo Ocean Race in her home country. Incredible scenes and incredible welcome for Dongfong Race Team. Oh, Annie and Dongfong race team here, they, they let their fans on a really wild journey on this leg. They did not give us anything but a roller coaster emotional ride. But you know, in the end, they started this leg how they meant to finish. And they, they started this leg well, they started this leg ahead of their competitors. Um, they sailed consistently. And yeah, they made that big call when they needed to. We've said that, you know, how they race the rest of this race has been quite consistent quite tight, no big risks, and uh, they took that big risk at the end here, um, the moment they needed to. Perfect racing. Perfect racing and incredibly tense racing as well. I mean, you're seeing just how long these celebrations go on for. This is no ordinary Volvo Ocean Race victory. This is something that, that they had in the opening stages, then it slipped away from them, then they had a chance to get now, as they started leg 11, they had two boats to beat, two rivals on equal pegging with them. It was going to come down to the wire. And let's not forget one reason why we're so close here was because of that elapsed time, the bonus point for the lowest elapsed time. That goes to the team, no surprise here, the one that was most consistent. Dongfong race team, their lap around the planet, significantly shorter than the others. Yeah, and let's not forget, you know, the last leg, leg 10 for them was tough. They were, they were doing well and, um, you know, then they got passed by their two competitors and, that, and that's, that's got to hurt you. That's got to add a damper to you and make, make you question if you've got enough speed. But clearly they had enough confidence to know that they did have, still have the speed and, and that takes some serious courage.
Oh, Dongfeng Racing, they've made their way inside the inner harbour. This is going to be agony for the fans and the family because they've got to drop that main before they can come onto the deck. Normally, we see the team very carefully dropping the main. I think this time they're probably going to be lowering it pretty quickly indeed because right now that main has done all its hard work. 46,000 miles completed. This boat has lived up to the hardship of the Southern Ocean. It has taken them through the sweltering heat of the doldrum. It has taken them all the way round the world to the final finish line, the Imasat finish line that they have now crossed means that Dongfeng race team can drop their sails knowing, well, you know what, if we damage it now, who cares? It's nothing but an heirloom. It's nothing but a little prize, a little piece of history. Dongfeng race team need to drop that main because the fans right here, they are waiting impatiently. They cannot wait to congratulate this boat. You say that now, but... You know, it's amazing how much routine you have, and you can see them here all crowding around <laughs> as normal to drop the main. And also, potentially savouring these moments, because however much they probably want to get to that dock and hug their friends and family and their shore crew, this does mean this race is over. And they've won it, but it's been an adventure. They've been together for, for a year and a half, this team, nearly two years, and actually some of them for two campaigns. And it'll be an amazing moment. They'll be really happy. But there's a slight sadness too, because it's over. But one thing that, that is going to be talked about so much in the coming days, weeks, months, is tactically this leg. I mean, Dongfeng race team were brilliant. I mean, this was not just one little lucky shift. They said, no, this is the way that you've got to go. The rest of you are wrong, and that's really smart. That is, that is exceptionally clever. And, you know, for fans of Dongfeng race team, they can be rightly proud of you know, navigator Pascal Badigri, but also the confidence in the whole team to follow that decision. Yeah, I mean, it's such a hard one when you see those other boats sailing out of sight and we're watching them on the tracker every second, but they don't have that. It's that you're waiting for every six-hour update and they must have been every six hours losing another 10 miles or more, which is tough. Um, but just to have the confidence with the team that it's all going to pay back in the end. And it wasn't just that last decision. I mean, this race, is, this particular leg's been really tough. They've had a lot of marks to go around and a lot of decisions to make. Um, so a very tired team right now, but a very happy team. Well, if you're wondering just how much it means for the sailors, take a look at here. The family, the shore team, they are on the dock. They are ready to congratulate each other. And there are tears being shed. So much has been sacrificed here from the families of the sailors and the shore teams. They work tirelessly long hours into the night to make sure these boats are as fast as possible. And they have done just that. I mean, it really has been so close that they couldn't leave anything to chance in terms of the setup of the boats. No. I mean, the setup of the boat and not only that, just the team, you know, and the families. I mean, it's nine months. You can't have people being unhappy for nine months and then still expect to win. So for Charles, I think it's been a fantastic campaign he's put together. And uh, he has to be so proud of himself with the team that he's built around him. And that's not just the sailors. This is everyone you're seeing on the dock right now. Well, no surprise then exactly how much this means to them. To see those hugs, those tears, that release of emotion after such a long journey. At times, tough, arduous, a real physical toll. And on this leg, certainly a big mental gamble, a big mental game. Dong Fong race team coming out on top. But right behind them, there is still a battle raging. Team Axon Abel, they are next to come into the finish line. Mafre are right behind them, desperate to try and close down that last little distance. It's 1.4 nautical miles to go for Team Axon Abel. Mafre are just 0.1 nautical miles behind them. It's going to be a big push for Mafre, but we know that the Spanish boat is fast. Yeah, the Spanish boats are definitely fast, and, and if this angle frees up at all, you know, we know, I, we've seen them be really fast downwind. But this is, this is a big moment for Team Axe and Noble. Well, right now we can hear from the man of the hour, the, um, the man of the leg. We have got Charles Cordrelia, skipper of Dongfeng race team, on the line. Charles, congratulations. Unbelievable scenes. Let me just say, I mean, victory in the Volvo Ocean Race. Superb display of sailing. Congratulations and well done. Oh, yes, to me, I can't believe it. You know, we have so much frustration on the last nine months, never win a leg and uh, always feeling well at the beginning and lost uh, lost points, so stupid. And uh, same here, we were leading with a good advantage and uh, at the start of the leg and we did uh, maybe think too much about the controlling Mapre and Mapre and us uh, 
let uh, the Watch other one coming back. back, and we say, no, it's not possible. And, and we, we trust our navigation, and we, we had a clear idea before the start where we want to pass. And uh, Marcel Ventriest uh, pushed us a lot. We never follow him as... We didn't follow him on the last Transat, and we lost so much, so much points. And we say, Allez, let's trust us, and we did it. And nobody come, we were surprised, and uh, wow, what an amazing finish. But thank you to my team, because I think they deserve it. They've done a fantastic job. Thank you to Dong Fong, who trust me so much the since the beginning, and uh, give me the opportunity to lead this uh, dream team. And I'm so proud to relate the dream of this team all together. Oh, Charles, is incredibly emotive scenes waiting for you on the dock. We have got thousands of fans here in the race village. There is a hero's welcome waiting for you to get to the dock. I mean, this has been an incredible journey for you, more than just this edition. And to lead a team round the world and across that finish line in first place, a proud moment for you as a skipper. I was uh, so so angry against me the last nine months because of Dong Fong Racing. We are going to pick it up with Charles when he hits the dock, but right now we are going to go back to the water because Team Axon Abel and Mafre, they are charging to the finish line. Right now, Simeon Team Point skipper of Team Axon Abel has been able to pull out another point one of a nautical mile. That's a little bit more breathing room. They've only got a little over half a nautical mile to go. They look set to be the first Dutch team to cross that finish line. And for the team that, well, they've been locked into fourth place, we knew that that wasn't going to change on the overall scoreboard, no matter what happened out here on the water. But to be the first boat across the finish line, that's a great way to wrap up your Volvo Ocean race. Yeah, we have seen them fight really hard in this leg. And I think just desperate to get, you know, that moment where they cross this finish line, it's not in first, they fought really hard for that, but they've led the pack they were with. And, you know, all you can do is win your side. And they've done that. And that's been tricky. I mean, the last five hours, they've had jiving. They've had a lot of fights going on. They've got in the middle of two boats fighting for an overall win. And uh, they've managed to pull out in front of both those boats and, you know, get on the podium here in The Hague, their home. That's really important to them. Well, the crew are still waiting for Dong Fong Racing to come into the top. The tears are still being shed. The Chinese boat warming the hearts of their friends, family, supporters, fans, everybody out here that has seen the culmination of this unbelievable battle. But there is still a fierce rivalry running right now on the water. Team Axon Abel, 0.4 nautical miles to the Imarsat finish line. Mafre just behind then. Then a little bit of a distance behind Team Brunel. Simeon now starting to feel confident, waving to the supporters to his team rib out there on the water. Simeon about to come across this finish line here. And he's done incredibly well because on leg 11, he was well into the mix. Challenges from Mafre, challenges from Team Brunel. And he's come to the front here. Yeah, and they've shown their force. You know, they've won a leg of this race already. They won the 24-hour record. We know they're fast. And, uh, you know, they've been a force we reckon with on this leg. And yeah, he, sh he definitely should be waving. You need to remember these moments. I mean, someone once told me, you know, you've got to celebrate your victories because actually, if you're racing hard, generally you don't win as much as you lose. And so it's <laughs> really important to celebrate your victories. And he deserves this. It's been a very tough, you know, work for him to skipper this team. They had problems at the beginning and they've come together and they've got some real achievements to be proud of here. Oh, and what a great way to wrap up this edition of the Volvo Ocean Race for Team Axon Abel. Fourth place on the leaderboard. That's guaranteed. We know that that is where the team are going to be when all the other points come in. That was decided after they finished into Gothenburg. They would have liked to overhaul Team Brunel, but it wasn't to be. However, on this leg, on this test, into The Hague, the ultimate destination, the final finish line of the Volvo Ocean Race, Team Axon Abel are going to lead over Team Brunel in into their home city, into Simeon Team Points country, the Netherlands. The Hague 
finish line is going to be all about Team Axinabel and Dong Fong Racing. Those two teams, incredible stories. Simeon Team Point, skipper of Team Axinabel, coming across the Imasat finish line in The Hague. Second place in the final leg of the Volvo Ocean Race. It's fourth place in this edition, but this finish here will mean so much for this team with the roar of their home crowd welcoming them after nine months' hard battle at sea. Second place goes to Team Axinabel. They clear the finish line and they will be in a big hurry to get into the dock here. Celebrations, an absolutely superb finish for this boat. We've seen this team fighting for the lean. We've seen this team pushing hard. And on this finish in particular, they came out very strong indeed. Mafre, commiserations for the Spanish team. The overall Volvo Ocean Race victory just slipping out of their grasp. Xavi Fernandez, the skipper of Mafre, desperately wanted to win this edition of the Volvo Ocean Race for Spain. Crossing the Imasat finish line, a third place finish on leg 11, means it will be second on the overall scoreboard for Spain. Another bittersweet finish, but Xavi Fernandez of Mafre can be rightly proud of pushing this race all the way down to those final few miles, a fight that raged right down to the wire. Oh, and it telling from the boat here on uh, Mafre, no celebrations on board. Uh, they should feel proud, they will feel proud, but right now all they're thinking about is what could have been. Yeah, I mean, you said to me, who do you want to win? And I think my answer was, I don't know, I'm just going to feel bad for whoever doesn't, because, you know, it was a three-way match race to this finish line. And Matt Free were so strong at the start of this race. And again, such a strong team, such an experienced team. And uh, they're going to be feeling that right now. But they do have a lot to be proud of. I mean, what a comeback for them in that Southern Ocean leg. Who, who else could come back from breakages like that and manage to finish that leg? And they really have just pushed through all the tribulations of it and thrown at them. And one thing that Mafre is going to leave on this edition of the Volvo Ocean Race is a model for professionalism, planning, preparation. I mean, they came into the race as, as stronger than any of their rivals. They set the bar straight from the off. They maintained that all the way through. It was just that final push when they're faced with that agonizing decision. Do I, do I chase Dong Fong race team? Do I cover Team Brunel? I mean, that's, that's a decision that I'm sure is going to keep them all, uh, awake at night. What could have been for the next few days? And, you know, let's not forget, they, they, they decided that they should go with that pack. And then, you know, then they ended up behind them. And they've had to fight the last five, six hours to get back ahead of Team Brunel. Uh, which they managed to do. So incredible work by Matt Frey. But I mean, I would have been with them. I don't think I could have split from everyone, you know? Well, next to come into the line, Bauer Becking and Team Brunel. They started this leg having pulled the competition all level. There was more riding on the finish of Mafre and Team Brunel than just the Volvo Ocean Race. Also, was it going to be Peter Burling or Blair Took that was going to be able to win Olympic gold medal, America's Cup and the Volvo Ocean Race? Sadly for them, it wasn't to be. And Team Brunel lost out to Dongfeng Race Team, to Team Axenabel and Mafre. It's going to be a fourth place finish for Bauer Becking and his team. That is going to see them finish this edition of the Volvo Ocean Race in third place. Bittersweet for Bauer Becking. It'll be his third, third place finish. He's already got three seconds as he wraps up his eighth Volvo Ocean Race campaign. Somebody that has left an indelible mark on the history of the race. As Dong Fong race team steals this victory out from underneath them. Superb tactics, great teamwork, and very clear leadership from Charles Cordrelia has made this moment possible for Dong Fong race team. The main is down, the sails are packed away, the boat is reversing into the dock, and the family are there waiting. The fans are ready to hear from the team, ready to see them step on the dock. And don't forget, the trophy is making its way down onto the pontoon. They will be presented with that trophy. The trophy 
that has been travelling around the world. It's been at every stopover. So the sailors have been walking past the trophy case every day here in the race village. They know what they have been trying to achieve. Dong Fong Race Team now have that moment. They have won the Volvo Ocean Race. Chinese flags waving and the legacy here for China has only just got started. This is going to ignite the torch. This is going to start something big for Chinese offshore sailing. And this is incredible for Chinese offshore sailing. You know, in, in 2012, we saw Lily, the radial sailor, win Olympic gold medal uh, for China in the Olympics. And now, you know, ocean racing is going to be on the map for them as well. And what an incredible legacy that they've left. For, for China, yeah. Dongfeng race team about to come into the dock. Team Brunel about to cross the Imarsat finish line. Bauer Becking wraps up his eighth Volvo Ocean race. 30 years of competing on the water, trying to win this elusive trophy. Sadly, on this edition, it wasn't to be, but my God, he pulled it so close. That superb roll of Mafre, the win into Gothenburg, brought it all square on the top of the leaderboard. And there's no surprise to see all the boats out there to welcome Bauer Becking into that finish line. A team that has meant so much to the Netherlands, along with Team Axe and Abel, two big powerhouses of this edition of the Volvo Ocean Race. And this final leg, hopes were resting on the shoulders of the crew on board Team Brunel. Could they lift the trophy? Sadly, it wasn't to be. Bauer Becking is going to leave this edition of the Volvo Ocean Race with another third place. Questions will remain. Will he come back? Will he do it again? He's proven himself to be a formidable leader of a team, a team that started this edition on the back foot without any practice time. They had to learn and they had to learn quickly. They did that. The final half of this edition has been all about the unbelievable comeback of this team. Sadly, on leg 11, Dong Fong Race Team and Mafre proved a little too much for Team Brunel. I think as uh, they cross the line, you know, again, we might see some sort of muted celebrations here, but they really have a lot to be proud of. Bauer Becking took on a lot of young sailors for this race. He's given them a massive opportunity and, you know, we've seen them just excel and their skills have just been accelerated through this race to the point that they managed to be, well, really a force to be reckoned with by the end of this race. Um, so Bauer Becking has a lot to be proud of here and he's helped the careers of some, you know, some of the sailors of the future in a big way. Well, Team Brunel cr have crossed the Imarsat finish line. Fourth place for Team Brunel in leg 11, which will mean third place on the overall leaderboard. A result that Bauer Becking will look back on with a smile, but sadly, the trophy slips out of his grasp once again. Let's not forget as well, you know, for KP, the navigator, this is KP's seventh race, and uh, he's a real rock on board this boat. So much experience. Well, the big story is all about this boat here, Dongfong Race Team now coming into the dock. The welcome is there, the cheers are deafening here in the race village in The Hague. The team have made their way in, smiles all round. Charles Goodrellia, one final push into the dock. The offshore legs completed for this boat. The Chinese flag is flying high. Carolyn Brown on one side. Chen Jinhao on the other. And Dong Fong Race Team reach the dock. Friends, family there. The trophy is making its way down onto the dock. That is what we are all here to see. Carolyn Brower, the roar of the crowd. That's a big welcome. <laughs> here we can see the Volvo Ocean, Volvo Ocean Race trophy making its way down. It's been on the road with all the teams around the world at every stopover. The teams will be able to see it glistening in the sun, down on the run, down to the dock. Charles Codrelli and the man that will receive this, the skipper, the leader of the team. His crew is there. He hasn't seen it yet. He's looking the wrong direction. He needs to turn around. He needs to see what is waiting for him. He's already held this trophy as a crew before, but it's going to mean something entirely different to be able to pick it up as a skipper and as a leader of this team. A 
Ready to hand over the trophy is Paula Klicker, the mayor of The Hague. And now the trophy starts making its way forward. Engraved with the names of the previous winners of the Volvo Ocean Race, Charles Codre. <laughs> Sharing the emotion, sharing that moment with the teams. Now he sees the trophy. Now he sees what he's been waiting for him. The Volvo Ocean Race Trophy. So uncertain as to who it would go to. Charles Gordrelia, skipper of Dog Bomb <laughs> Race Team, lifts the trophy for China, for his team, and for Dong Fong Race Team. Celebrating and sharing this moment. And this, this is the moment. This is what all that hard work, all that sacrifice, all that pain, all that danger, all the fear, everything has come down to. Oh, that was a very high tariff pass over there for the rest of the crew with the champagne cork has been popped. Charles Cordrelia beaming from ear to ear. And any good skipper knows how worthy the team are around him. And, and this team has really supported every decision that Pascal Badivari, Charles Cordrelli has made. This is very much a team effort. Yeah, and actually, I think you saw as Charles picked up the trophy, it looked like for those first few moments of holding it, it was more relief you saw in his face. <laughs> you know, relief that he's done it and he's got his team home safe and in first. Um, and now, I think you start to see him celebrate, but begin with it, there was just that relief. And in the last edition of the race, Abu Dhabi Ocean Racing, they knew that they were going to hold that Volvo Ocean Race trophy before they got to the final destination. They had been that dominant that they wrapped it up. This time, however, anything but so close. I'm sure the sailors on board Dong Fong Racing, in, in fact, on board any of the teams, would have had a lot of sleep this night. Could we? Will we? Is it going to be ours? We, we heard um, sci-fi Simon Fisher from Avestus Lemthau Racing, the navigator, but also the navigator of Abu Dhabi last time, saying how nervous he was. And last Incredible. time when they already had a wrap -up. I can't believe it. Even until the last, uh, the last 10 minutes, I say something is going to happen. We have so much frustration on the last nine months. Never win a leg. Always in good position at the start and fail and fail. And as a skipper, it was really tough. I, I say I have to win. I have a fantastic team around me. I, if I fail, it's, and uh, and uh, again yesterday we were not in such a good position, but we for the, we trust what we want, our choice, and we push, and uh, we win, we win, uh, and everybody follow us, and we win. And uh, yes, I just want to say thank you to to everybody. So much people first, my Dong Fong give me the trust since two editions now. Mark Turner, Bruno Dubois, who asked me to become skipper of his dream team. And, uh, and now uh, all the crew around me, all the guys around me, because it's really a team job. I'm not sure I've been the best skipper, but I'm sure I've, I've been the best team around me. And we had a low, very big low, because a lot of frustration. And, but we always trust, we always, even on the, nobody, I know nobody trusts we could win on the last leg. But I had something, uh, I had a good feeling, I said, it's not possible, we can't lose, we can't lose, we can't lose. And we win. <laughs> and just finally, anything you want to say to firstly your team, but also your fans, your friends, your family, those that have been with you the whole way through this incredible journey? Yes, first is the family, it's not only my family, it's all the family, because uh, this, when you go for this race, you involve all your family, and, uh, and it's tough for them, so thank you to them to to take care of our kids or our life on, on shore when we are not there. And of course the team, fantastic team, it's not only about the seller, we always speak about the seller, but um, 
I think Don Forest team was the strongest team. It's not maybe not the best selling team, but I'm sure we are the strongest team because we are everybody was 100 percent behind us and uh, even if we never we have so much frustration, they were always positive and uh, each time we start a leg we knew that they have done everything for us. So we wanted to offer that this victory. So thank you to all Dong Fong Race team because this is a fantastic team who won the World Ocean Race, not only a sailing team. Charles, thank you for putting on such an incredible performance. Enjoy this moment, absorb this moment as winners of the Volvo Ocean Race. And I'm now gonna throw to Ruka who is with Carolyn Brower to ask a few words. Charles Godrelia, skipper of Dong Fong race team, just giving us some indication of just how much this moment means. But we can hear more from the sailors. Amy Monkman is with Kevin Oscoffia. This his second Volvo Ocean race and first victory. Kevin, congratulations. That was an incredible leg. Not only have you won the Volvo Ocean race overall, but you got your leg win. You were by far the most consistent team. You must be, I mean, the app. And the atmosphere down here is electric. I mean, you must be absolutely delighted. Bah, yeah, very happy, very happy. And uh, because we, 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 we won this leg, we won the Volvo, uh, how we, we know to sail. So it, it means that uh, we've been uh, what, uh, what we wanted. Yeah, each time we've been close to a boat, you know, if you remember Newport, if you remember other legs, we haven't been that good because we are looking too much at the other one. And each time we have been able to, to sail the way we, we, we're doing, alone, uh, alone, I think we're good, we're fast, and uh, we win in uh, the way we love to, to sail alone. And we've been pushing also a bit more uh, uh, than usual. We've been a very steady uh, steady crew, steady steady team. Uh, we've been at, uh, in the top three uh, most of the time. And uh, the last three days, I think we've been uh, doing what uh, maybe was uh, uh, missing missing to us. It means uh, pushing a bit harder, and we've been uh, pushing the, the few person that, uh, that, uh, that we, we need uh, to win the leg. And winning this leg means winning the, the Volvo Ocean race. So it's just amazing. And to win with, the, with this kind of crew, with friends on board, with people I've been selling for, for more than 15 years, it's, uh, it's just uh, wonderful. Kevin, thank you so much. The atmosphere is electric. We're going to let you get back to your crew. Thank you so much and congratulations again. Back to you now. Well Kevin and Scoffy are down on the dock here. The celebrations are going to continue. We're going to hear more from the teams. But right now on the water, still drama rolling in. Turn the tide on plastic. Next across the Imarsat finish line here. And this is a very important finish for this team. Of course, they need to get a boat in between them and Sun Hung Kai Scallywag. Right now, out in the water, it, well, it was looking pretty good, but it looks like Vestas 11th Hour Racing have fallen behind Sun Hung Kai Scallywag. So turn the tide on plastic. The next boat to finish as we go on board with them. They are going to wrap up leg 11 with a fifth place into The Hague. It's still going to have some work to do, though, if they want to get off that bottom spot. And this is going to come down to the import race. I mean, not great news for Turn the Tide on Plastic, but good news for us now. It's going to make that import race all the more exciting. Um, but what an incredible leg and race by this team. I mean, uh, I think we've seen them being strong contenders from earlier than halfway through that race, and that's incredible, given how new this team are to this race. Well, you've said it there, a new team, a young team. This is pretty much inexperienced for a lot of these sailors. They came out uh, on leg one. They did their first long offshore leg, and they've had to learn on the job while doing. They've done incredibly well. The results, their scorecard, it doesn't really reflect their performance. They were leading in multiple legs of the edition, this edition of the Volvo Ocean Race. De Kafari and turn the tide on plastic as they cross the MRSAT finish line. Leave this edition of the Volvo Ocean Race with a little more to do. It is going to come down to the import series, but celebrations now as they know that they are Volvo Ocean Race sailors. They have completed the offshore section of this edition. Huge moment here for these young sailors on board turn the tide on plastic but let's go back to Dong Fong race team we have got Carolyn Brower this her third Volvo Ocean race let's hear from her I'm down on the dock with Caroline Brown. Listen, amazing Olympian mother, now Volvo Ocean race winner. Incredible. Tell us what you feel. Oh, it's crazy. It's been an insane race. It's been an insane leg. Uh, we always said that uh, we were going to win a leg in the Volvo Ocean race, and there's no better leg to win than the last one. So here we are, and we win the race. I, I can't describe how I feel. It's just, uh, yeah, my goal was to win the race. And uh, to be the first woman to do it is, uh, is great, but uh, I really thank my team and uh, 
they're behind us all the way and uh, the shore team, the logistics team and us sailors on the boat, we pulled it off together and uh, yeah, I couldn't have done it without them. And just tell us about that crucial moment where you had to decide to go around the east, you had to split from the whole fleet. Uh, what was the tension like on board? It was huge, it was pretty intense the whole way around, you know. Uh, we've been in the lead a lot of times and we've lost the lead and it happened to us again and we just had to keep our cool, you know, we just had to keep our head together and uh, when we split from Mapfrey, we were like, oh, there were some pretty intense moments but, you know, we'd studied this very hard, this moment that we had to decide, do we go inshore or offshore and we just believed that we were going to do it inshore and we did. And when the emotion, uh, when the adrenaline leaves, the emotion comes with your children and all of your supporters, the sacrifices that you've made to get here. Uh, yeah, I think, you know, it's been a pretty emotional roller coaster the whole race, uh, up and down. And uh, yeah, just every time uh, after a really tough leg to get back and see your family on the dock is just the most amazing, most amazing thing. And yeah, to be able to pull it off and finish it off here, it's been so close, so intense. Yeah, there's a lot of emotions going through us right now. Cute, wonderful, enjoy it, congratulations. Thank you very much, thanks. Carolyn Brower down on the dock having won the Volvo Ocean Race as part of Dongfong Race Team. Meanwhile, out on the water, Sun Hung Kai's scallywag, skippered by David Wynn, is going to be the next boat to cross the finish line. And Annie, just a moment ago, we were touching on the significance of this. Turn the tide on plastic. They've already finished. They crossed in fifth. Now, Team Sun Hung Kai's scallywag, they're going to cross in sixth place. That ties these two boats on the leaderboard, the split being the import series. A series that Sunungai Skellywag currently is ahead of Turn the Tide on Plastic. Yeah, and you know, we saw that they were behind Vessels Land they were racing and they've managed to pass them, which is a, a big pass for them. And um, this is a really big moment for this team as well. I mean, the, arguably the team that have had the toughest race. Um, they have also won a leg, you know, a new team to this race again. Um, a really tough race for them. And uh, this is going to be a big moment for them. You know, they're honouring John Fisher as they cross this finish line. And what an incredible team to be able to get through that together and pass the boat into the finish line here. And an extra special moment for the uh, lady on the helm, Anamika Best, the Olympic silver medalist in 2008. She is driving Sun Hong Kai's scallywag as a sailor from the Netherlands into The Hague. David Wick giving up the wheel and letting Anamika Best take this moment, and a very special moment indeed. I mean, I remember seeing her all the way back in Alicante. She was having to learn fast about offshore sailing, how it was that she was going to bring that Olympic experience onto those long offshore legs. She's certainly done incredibly well. And now, a year later, I mean, you're a different sailor after everything you've been through. Yeah, this is incredible for Annemiek. Um, she's actually been one of my main competitors throughout my entire career. I think we've raced each other for 12 years on the Olympic circuit. Um, Annemiek came to trial with Team SCA. She was in the team for a year and didn't quite make the cut at the end. And it was such a sad moment for us to lose her because she's an incredible team player. And wow, what a moment for her to get to steer a Volvo 65 across the finish line in her hometown. I'm really Annemiek proud of her. Annemiek and Best steers Sun Hong Kai Scallywag across the Imarsat finish line. Sixth place for David Witt and his team. The Volvo Ocean Race has been an incredibly tough one for these sailors here. They have faced adversity, they have faced hardship, but they decided to carry on. And as a team, they have now sailed the Volvo Ocean Race all the way to its completion. David Witt back on the helm here a very strong leader of a very tight-knit crew. And Annie, we really can't say enough here about Sun Hong Kai Scallywag coming back from those very sad times in the Southern Ocean. And that's incredibly hard to make that decision to push on. The second half of this race, you could see how difficult it was for them. They weren't able to match the scorecard that they got in the first few legs. But credit to David Weir and the crew for keep going, keep pushing, and keep fighting hard. Yeah, I mean, this has been so tough for this team and it's really every team's nightmare to have to go through what they've gone through. Um, and yeah, amazing that they could stay together. And, you know, some of these sailors have sailed together for a long time, as you said, you know, it's their first Volvo Ocean race together, but this is a tight-knit team. They've raced together in other boats um, for a long time and, uh, you know, they've stuck together. And they, they've got to be proud of themselves right now. Yeah, we are. 
Sun Honkai Scallywag are now through the line. They're going to be next into the dock. The other teams are making their way in, I can tell you here from our position in the studio. All the fans are making their way to the Sailors Terrace where we're going to see the winning teams, the winning skippers, Sailors, start to make their way up for the celebrations. The last boat to come across the Imasat finish line is going to be Vestas 11th Hour Racing. And, you know, Annie, if you've just tuned into the race now, what, what, what you don't get from this shot is actually they were vying for the lead. I mean, off from Gothenburg, they were the only team that were really chasing down those front two boats. It looked like it was going to be a podium finish for Vestas, another team that's had a very difficult edition of the Volvo Ocean Race. Yeah, I mean, Vestas looked to be on the podium in this leg. And to be honest, at the beginning of this race, they won the first leg. And despite having come into the race later than Matt Free and, and Don Kong race team, they, you know, they were a real challenger from the beginning and they faced serious adversity in this race. But what a team. They really are a strong team. They also have a very strong message with them. You know, 11th hour is doing incredible things for sustainability. And I think you'll see around the race village lots of evidence of this team. Uh, you know, they're carrying another message as well and a really important one in this race. Well, as you say, Vessels 11th hour racing, they have had some big hardship. They missed out four legs, uh, a, a collision on the way into Hong Kong, a deep masting uh, just round Cape Horn. But just as we know from our Volvo Ocean Race sailors, they dug in, they kept going, they held together as a team. They didn't quit when the going got tough. And in this leg, they were certainly on the pace. They set the bar incredibly high for those chasing groups. They missed out in the closing stages here in The Hague when that inshore route started to pay. A cruel twist of fate for Charlie Enright and Mark Tao. And they are going to cross the Imasat finish line in last place on leg 11, a seventh for the final leg. It was the final leg in the last edition that they managed to win. But now for Vestas 11th hour racing, it's not to be. Charlie Enright and Mark Tao started this edition of the Volvo Ocean Race with a win on leg one. Now they complete it, crossing the Imarsat finish line in seventh place. A tough finish to an incredibly hard edition of the Volvo Ocean Race for all the sailors on board. They have held together, held their nerve and kept the team strong. Vestas 11th hour racing now complete the incredible venture that is the Volvo Ocean Race. Final furl of the Code Zero at the front of the boat. Vestas 11th hour racing. Annie, you can tell from the body language here, this was hard for them, considering in the early stages of this leg, they were thinking, we, we might go out on this one with a win. Yeah, and to be honest, this was the only team in this leg that didn't have another battle going on. So I know coming into this this leg, they just wanted to show what a strong team they are. And they are, and this result is not a reflection of that. I mean, we've seen them strong in the Southern Ocean before they broke their mast. I think they were in second, you know, coming in to Hong Kong, they were in second. We can't forget the positions they've been in and how well they've sailed in this race. And their results do not reflect that, and nor does this result. I thought it was very telling at the press conference in Cardiff, just before this leg, you know, Charlie Enright was saying that, well, if things hadn't gone the way that it had, I mean, you can't change history, but if things had been different, maybe we'd be talking about four teams vying for the lead. And I think that was a very real possibility when you consider the pace that this team came in. However, best of 11th hour racing, we know they're going to finish fifth and the overall leaderboard of this edition of the Volvo Ocean Race as Team Axe Abel coming into the harbour. Down on the dock, we've got Amy Monkman. Amy, a special moment for all the fans that have come out here to The Hague. Yeah, absolutely. A super special moment. And I'm actually just here quickly with Bruno Dubois and Horace from Donfong Race Team. Horace, this must be an incredible moment for you and for Chinese sailing in general. How do you feel? Um, it's a fantastic moment, amazing. We did, uh, you know, we prepared for so long since the uh, last Volvo. Very thanks uh, sponsor, give us a uh, bigger trust and bigger uh, support. Let us can focus on what we have to do. That's why today, as I said, we win the race. This is the uh, best moment. Thanks Dongfeng and thanks everyone for us. And um, we will do better in the future. Thank you, Horace. And Bruno, just quickly, you're looking like a very, very proud man right now. And you were there when you first met these Chinese sailors. You've come so far. What's it like to have seen them grown and to finish in first place? It's the best moment in our life as a, as a sailor and a manager. I think it's the best. 
you know, professional moment for us. And I'm proud that those guys, after only two Volvo, they win it. So job done. I'm happy. Job done. Happy man. We can see Axo docking in behind you. So we're going to let you go. Thank you so much and congratulations again. Team Axelabel, the first of the Dutch teams docking in here in The Hague, the ultimate destination of this edition of the Volvo Ocean Race. Martin Grail on the back corner, but the man of the moment. See in team point, the skipper steering the boat in, in reverse. They've got to get their lines on. This final little last agonizing bit of teamwork for all of our competitors here in the Volvo Ocean Race. These boats, they are worth a fortune. You do need to take a little bit of care of them. You do need to see them safely to the dock. But the smile on the skipper's face is very telling. Emily Nagel just next to him, coming into this edition of the Volvo Ocean Race with, well, a, a novice, really. I mean, but this has been a meteoric rise for her. And she now finishes this edition of the Volvo Ocean Race with a second place on the final leg. And then skipper Simeon team point straight into the arms of the people that matter. It's been a very tough journey for this skipper, for this team. And they knew when they left Gothenburg they weren't going to be able to move any higher than a fourth in the overall standings. But that wasn't going to mean that they were going to race leg 11 easy. They were going to push hard. They wanted to try and show everybody how much more they've got to give. Simeon Team Point very much did that on that final leg. And when you go into those final legs here, Annie, you know that for some of the teams, as we've seen with Vestas 11th Hour Racing and Team Max and Abel, the scores are set in stone. You don't want to sit back, though. You know that there's still more than just a scoreboard. There's pride at stake. Yeah, a race is still a race. You know, these are all very competitive sailors. and. Uh, they had a point to make coming into the Hague here. Um, you know, they won their side. You can't really ask more than that, and that's given them a second on the podium. I think they'll be very proud to be on the podium, and I'm sure they'll be very proud to be the first Dutch boat in. There's always some Dutch rivalry. Simeon, what a feeling it must be to finally dock here in the Hague, where it all started for your team. Ja, Thuishaven Den Haag. Iedereen bedankt op de kant. Ongelooflijk, wat een publiek. Echt, wat een kick om hier te arriveren. Just talk us through what you must be feeling right now. You've achieved so much and this journey has finally come to an end. What, what emotions are going through your mind right now? Yeah, a lot of emotions. It's, uh, it's been an unbelievable hard journey uh, from two and a half years to bring this team, Dutch team, together. And yeah, we've been through a lot of uh, ups and downs, but uh, you know, uh, yeah, it's it's incredible to uh, to finish on a podium in in our uh, in our hometown. And all my congratulations go to Caroline. She's the the hero and the star of the Netherlands. What an incredible race she has sailed, and I mean, I'm super happy for her. And proudest moment, obviously a podium finish now, but. You know, record breakers, you've done so much on this, this particular series. It's been such a ride. No, it's, it, it, it has been such a ride. I mean, we had an unbelievable difficult start in, in Alicante. And, we, and as a team, we had a regroup and we did that. And from Melbourne on, we, we've been sailing podiums. And uh, only we didn't have one podium to Newport. So it says something about the team. And, you know, it's it's still that uh, the breakage of the mast uh, from Cape Town to Melbourne that has really hurt. So we would have loved to fight as well here uh, into the Hague for that uh, for that final podium. But uh, I think, yeah, I'm I'm unbelievable proud. We the fastest Volvo boat in the world, and, uh, and I think five five six podiums, six podiums now. So yeah, it's incredible. And the guys did an unbelievable job, and the guys on shore did an unbelievable job to get us here safe. And I'm now going to hand you over to my co-host so you can say a few more words to your home crowd. How was this last two What a gek huis. Yeah, this last two I think that I in total two and a half hours slept. And we have been unbelievably hard to work to come here on a podium in Den Haag. And on the last we were not net. Mafre pakken en, en, en Brunel afhouden en uh, ja, we hebben er keihard voor gevochten en uh, het was gewoon echt een, uh, een beetje een offshore race zoals we die kennen in, uh, in Nederland. Nou nog één keer dan zeg nog even tegen Naag wat je van ze vindt want ze zijn fantastisch dames en heren. Axel Nobel is weer thuis, Simeon wat zeg je tegen ze? 
Den Haag, dankjewel! Dankjewel, gefeliciteerd. Swimming team point, skipper of team Axel Bell soaking up the hero's welcome he's experiencing here on the dock. But we can hear from the rest of the crew, Nikolai Siesten is down there with Amy Monkman. Thanks now, Nikolai, what a fantastic leg you sailed. What a fantastic thing to come in as a Dutch boat, in the first Dutch boat into The Hague. And also, you know, congratulations on second place. What was this leg like for you? This was incredible tough. I mean, uh, people think these short legs are easier, but the long ones, but they're not. I mean, we haven't slept since we left in, in Gothenburg. So, yeah, we had to give everything to, to get that win. And we thought we had it until half an hour ago. And then Dong Feng came out of nowhere and, 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 and won the leg. And well done to them. You know, congratulations. They sell well and they won the World Rosen race and they deserved it. So, yeah, well done to them. But, but yeah, we're going to be happy with the second. It's, uh, it's a great finish for us as a Dutch boat and a great finish to the campaign. It's, uh, it's been a long run for us. We had our ups and downs, but we, we, we pulled it together and, and we, we hang it out and we finish in a good in a high and that's all we can ask for. And, and now we're just going to enjoy it, relax and celebrate it. I mean, your team have had a lot of ups and downs, but it's not just the sailors that go on that journey with you. It's the shore crew, it's the families, it's everybody. The atmosphere is incredible down here. What is it like to just know that it's all over? It's it's going to be completely weird for you know for us to finish this. I mean, even tomorrow is going to be a weird day. Now what? But no, you, you're definitely right. This is not just about us. It's actually more about the families, the shore crew, all the people behind us, the sponsor, Axel Nobel. They hang it out as well. You know, they give everything for so long just so we can sail and have fun. So we owe a massive thanks to them, and we're going to probably spend the next two years paying back to the families and all these people for giving their two, two, two years of their life to us. So that's what we're going to spend the time doing. And then maybe we can do another race after we pay back. But for now, we have to be grateful for all the people behind us. All right, Nicolo, we'll let you get back to the celebrations. Congratulations once again. Back to you now. Thanks, Amy. Nicolo Siestead from Team Axel Abel, a sailor that got the last edition of the race with uh, Team Vestas win. Had a little bit of a, a hard time now, though, into the final finish line in the hay. And we just hear around us here in the studio, we are being swamped by fans. But down on the dock, Andy Green is sitting there with the Grail family. Let's get the input from Torben Grail, a legend of the race, and Martin Grail from Team Axel Abel. Well, Martin, we'll go straight to you. Uh, an amazing journey for you around the world. Uh, great results coming in here. Uh, what are your thoughts right now? Uh, mission completed. <laughs> Almost completed. We've got some uh, import racing, which is pretty fun. Uh, I think, yeah. It's finished. <laughs> and can you introduce us to your friend here? Uh, this guy is number two in the speed record uh, <laughs> in 24 hours because <laughs> we got the current record. Well done. Congratulations. And uh, now that the adrenaline is over, there's a moment of emotion. You can reflect back on all that you've achieved. You've done so much in your Olympic career, but this is a highlight now. Uh, this is definitely uh, very uh, up to uh, you know to, to the Olympics. I think as a challenge, is actually much bigger because it's psychological, physical, a lot of things. Uh, it's a, a completely different, but a really high uh, pinnacle, pinnacle of our sport for sure. Okay, and Torben, I can't uh, not go without a quick question. H how does it feel? You're a previous winner. You're obviously a previous holder of the 24-hour record. Got beaten by your daughter. It's got to be a proud moment for you. It is, and uh, it's, it's very good to lose uh, for uh, somebody from your home. So, uh, in any uh, of the other teams, you know, at least it's uh, within it's the family. It's in good hands. Uh, uh, excellent, and you've done the race. What, what, what advice did you give, and uh, what, what feelings now? Dinner, dinner table conversation is going to be interesting now. Oh, well, yeah, she, she, uh, she has all the experience now, and uh, of course, when uh, she started, uh, uh, she was new to offshore. And, so I think it's a huge uh, experience for her. OK, and Martin, uh, the next campaign, a family team maybe? Yeah, uh, ask me in a year's time. <laughs> you go sailing with your dad around the world? Uh, I don't know, ask me in a year's time. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, uh, just, a, uh, just a final word in Portuguese for all your fans, please. So many watching. Galera, valeu pela torcida! There you go, a Martin, a Torben Grau, legends, the two of them. Thank you. Thanks, Andy. Martine Grail, gold medal winner in the Olympics and now Volvo Ocean Race sailor with her father, Torben Grail, a legend of the race. But we can hear from the navigator of Team Axel Abel, somebody who's had a big part to play in the success on this final leg. Jules Salter is down on the dock with Amy. Jules, 
That was a very, very tough leg to navigate, so to speak. It was absolutely incredible to watch you guys from the moment you left shore. I know you've just told me you had five hours sleep, but what an incredible job you've done despite that. Yeah, it was a hard one. There was so much um, to it, so many short little legs. It was like day racing, most of it. And um, yeah, we had a great start and then um, we're up and down amongst the fleet, but never give in. And so much can happen and we kind of proved that in the end and managed to get a second out of it. So pretty happy with that. And this is your fourth time around the world, just completed your fourth world tour with the Volvo Ocean Race. How does it feel when you know that it's all over? Um, as a navigator, I think mainly you're relieved just so you get everyone back safely and you haven't hit anything or fouled anything or cocked something up. So you know, it's great relief and good fun when you look back on it, really. Just remember the good times, that's what you've got to do. Fantastic, Jules. Well, congratulations on a well-earned second place. We'll leave you there. Back to you now. Thanks, Amy. Next coming to the dock, it is Mafre, the team that left Gothenburg, started leg 11 with so much at stake. They wanted to be able to lift the Volvo Ocean Race trophy for Spain. They have done their country proud nonetheless. And you can see that by the flags and the fans that are waiting for them on the dock. Xabi Fernandez, a double Olympic medalist, wanted to hold that trophy. It's not going to be this time, but surely with the talent and the skill and the performance that this team has brought to this edition of the Volvo Ocean Race. They could still do it in the near future. Yeah, I mean, they are definitely a force to be reckoned with. And another team that seems more like a family, to be honest. Uh, when you watch this team eating dinner together, it's like a family sitting around a table. And uh, I'm sure they're going to keep going, and then they've got to keep going. They're part of this race. A relief to see the smiles on board the skipper, Xavi Fernandez, and indeed all the crew. Disappointment, I'm sure, that they weren't able to win this leg, or at least be able to beat um, the Dong Fong race team. However, now they know that the Volvo Ocean Race offshore section has been completed. They can feel very proud of taking that battle all the way to this last finish line, those last few miles. Xabi Fernandez and crew now with the dock. Let's listen into the dock and get some reactions from the sailors themselves. The Americas Cup on board. It's unbelievable they've uh, shown these uh, these last legs. Three times leg winners. It's unbelievable. Malfrey, real champions of the world for this year and this edition. They absolutely gave it everything. That's for sure. with skipper Xavi Fernandez. Wow, what an incredible race. And this particular leg, the closest in Volvo Ocean Race history. You did your nation proud. Well, I guess so, yes. But a uh, tough, tough leg for us. Of course, I think we sailed very well all the way. And, uh, you know, yesterday we, we changed the strategy and obviously it didn't work for us. But, uh, you know, I think we sailed very well the whole way around the world and this leg as well. And, of course, uh, highly disappointed right now. But uh, tomorrow we'll be better. There is a lot of positives that you can take from this series and the way that your team has performed throughout. And I know that your loyal fans over there, if you want anything to say to them, they're very proud of you too. Yeah, yeah, and so am I. I've been uh, all the team and, and I think we have done a very good Volvo and we've been very, very close this time. But, uh, you know, just uh, not enough. So just say congratulations to Don Fang, which is just a little bit better than us. And just finally, one thing that we've noticed is no matter what is thrown at your team, you always seem to find a way to deal with it, a way around it. What is your motto? What is your what drives you in those moments and, and gets you up there in the mix? Well, I think uh, everyone everyone knows uh, what uh, this is about, you know. And uh, we have lost more, uh, more many races than we have won, so <laughs> I guess we're used to to these situations, uh, you know, I think we have uh, had a very good group. Uh, we have enjoyed a lot. I think uh, one of the comments today is that it's been a very good fun uh, around the world race. So, you know, we're happy, happy in general. Of course, disappointed today, but very happy with what we have done. Tabby, thank you for speaking to us and thank you for putting on such a great show and such a close race. Let's hear it for Matt Frey! Xavi Fernandez, skipper of Mafre, and you can hear the disappointment in his voice. This is his fifth Volvo Ocean race. He's done one better than his previous, a third in the 2000 edition, but his second 
now as he uh, reaches the dot. Sadly, not the win that he was looking for, but very close indeed. Blair Took on the harbour. He wanted to be the man to get the Olympic gold medal, the America's Cup, and the Volvo Ocean Race win. It's second place in the Volvo Ocean Race, an incredibly impressive performance, but for somebody who is used to being right up the top, it, at this moment at least, is a difficult, tricky pill to swallow indeed. We've got all the spectators on the fans. They are waiting for the reactions from the teams. We're going to be able to bring you the words from the sailors as they come off these boats. We have heard from Dongfeng Race Team, Team Axe and Abel. We are with Mafre at the moment, and now we can hear from Spanish Olympian Tamara Echigoyen. <laughs> Tamara, don't start. You'll get me going. Yeah. Uh, emotional moments. Yeah, for sure. We are so happy for the second position, but I think that we were ready for winning the race, and for that, I think that sometimes it's a little bit painful, but I think that Dom Fendi did a really good job in the water, so they deserve this, this final award. So I think that now we have to enjoy with this moment, and, well, keep going. And why, why does this race engender such emotion, the time? The... It's so tough. <laughs> Because it's like it's a long race. I think that we had a really tough legs in the middle of the race, so we have a lot of emotion now. I think that we need to relax a little bit, enjoy the moment, and enjoy the family and friends that all of us are around here. So it's like it's a really, really, really amazing race. Well, you know how to win in a clutch. I saw you win in 2012 at the Olympics, <laughs> just not quite able to do it this time. Well, I think that for me, it's. It was amazing enjoying part of the stream. Mafre, I learned a lot of things, so I think that now I'm a better sailor. I think that is my first goal in this kind of race. So now sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, but you always have to learn. Hey, great. Thank you so much. We love you. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> OK, back to you. Tamara Echegoyen, uh, Olympian, Team Brunel now making their way in. But, but Annie, you know, emotional scenes from all the sailors here. This moment means so much to them. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm almost in tears watching Tamara there, and I'm so proud of Tamara. It's only a year ago that we were sat down together talking through how to do different peels on a Volvo 65, and she's now sailed around the world and got a second place in the Volvo Ocean Race. She is a force to be reckoned with. Well, team Brunel are on the dock. We're going to be hearing from the skipper, from the team, from the sailors in just a little moment. Um, we've seen some emotional scenes from Mafre, and for reasons that, well, anybody that has ever gone up against any sort of rivalry will understand. Uh, Mafre, along with Team Brunel, losing out in the closing stages of this leg to Dong Fong Racing, the boat that took the in side course, a very gutsy move, one that was made 20 hours before the finish, but it came to fruition for Dong Fong Race Team. Bauer Becking, the skipper of Team Brunel, has stepped over to be greeted by his wife. It should be celebrations for this team for making the race so close, but any fans of this team will know that in those final stages, it's so close, it could have been this boat that was lifting the trophy. Bauer Becking, with the Dutch fans here in The Hague, the final stopover for this edition of the Volvo Ocean Race. Not yet able to let this difficult challenge that we have just seen played out, not able to let that one go. He's had a very tough edition of the Volvo Ocean Race. He started on the back foot, came into it late, had to build a crew about the sailors that were left, managed to find some exceptional talent in some of the America's Cup sailors, but of course, no real offshore experience. However, pulled the team well, and we can listen in to the skipper, and we can hear from what he's got to say about this incredible journey that he's been on. Bauer Becking, eighth time around the world, and you put on such a show for us. That was incredibly close. You threw everything at it. You must be proud of yourself and your team. Yes, I think, uh, first of all, congratulations to Dong Feng. Uh, they, of course, uh, they won, deserve winners. And, of course, Mafra Beaters as well. So, fair play, still podium. I think uh, we can be very proud as a team. And we have all been absolutely hooked on your story. Ever since leg seven, you found something, an extra gear or something, I don't know. And you, you just gave it absolutely everything. And I just want to know what you'd like to say to the fans out there that have been following you all the way through, even from the very beginning. Nou, ik denk dat ik nu even Nederlands kan gaan praten. Uh, het is fantastisch de aankomst die we hier hebben gehad. En alle support die wij uh, gedurende de afgelopen race hebben gehad van iedereen uh, 
in de afgelopen maanden. Dus uh, heel hartelijk dank en we gaan er een fantastisch feestje van maken deze week. And I'm sure nobody knows better than you the, the sacrifice and effort that goes into a Volvo Ocean Race campaign, regardless of where you finish. It is a huge thing to do once, twice, three times, but eight times. Are you crazy? <laughs> yes, I must be nuts a little bit, but uh, I just love it. And uh, I think that's, uh, that's the main thing. So, uh, yeah, it's one of these things in life. You, you can let it go or you can't let it go. And, and the Volvo Ocean Race uh, has, has totally in my grips. That is very well said. I'm now going to just pass you over to my co-host for a few words. Rutger, over to you. Paul, van harte gefeliciteerd. Ja, het is waanzinnig race race. Je was al een zeilheld hier in de Nederlands, maar je, hebt, je bent alleen nog maar groter geworden. Hoe was deze laatste lek? Ja, de laatste etappe was natuurlijk uh, een, beetje, een beetje zuur in het begin. We hebben de aansluiting gemist. Maar ik denk uh, dat we daar laten zien dat we, het, dat we nooit opgeven. En uh, we hebben ons uh, goed kunnen terugvechten. Tongveen ging de andere kant op. Uh, de juiste beslissing. Zij hebben gewonnen, wij niet. Maar ik denk, uh, we kunnen gewoon trots zijn, ook uh, hoe, de manier hoe we hebben gevaren. Over trots gesproken, je moet eens weten hoeveel emotie er hier was, hoe we met jullie hebben meegeleefd en hoe we echt geschreeuwd hebben hier op de hele venue om te hopen dat jullie weer wonnen. Dat is het helaas niet gelukt, maar we zijn ongelooflijk trots op je. Hoe trots ben jij op Den Haag dat ze dit evenement hier naartoe hebben gehaald en kijk eens om je heen naar al die mensen. Ja, ik denk ten eerste dat we Brunel moeten bedanken, want uh, die hebben de afgelopen race hier al een pitstop kunnen organiseren. Toen heeft Den Haag laten zien hoe wij een evenement kunnen organiseren en daarom hebben ze nu de finish gekregen. Ja, en natuurlijk de opkomst hier is, het is nu al geslaagd denk ik. Fantastisch, en nu een week gaan we natuurlijk opraden in Poort, maar we gaan ook een klein beetje feest vieren toch met elkaar. Dat gaan we zeer zeker doen. Dames en heren, mag ik u absoluut de nieuwe Michiel de Ruiter van Nederland zou ik hem willen noemen, dames en heren. Geldt alsjeblieft een groot applaus voor Bouwer Becking. Bauer Becking, skipper of Team Brunel. But let's go back to the reactions from Maffrey. Blair Took is with Amy Monkman. You were very emotional docking in there. It was a bittersweet finish for your team. Second on the podium overall. You must still be very, very proud. Yeah, obviously, uh, pretty emotional seeing all our, our, the rest of our team, Shaw crew and family. And uh, yeah, it's been an amazing, um, amazing eight months. But um, you know, we just couldn't quite do it at the end there. So uh, yeah, pretty gutted. But um, you know, I'm sure it will, it will sink in. You know, just how great of experience it has been. But. Um, yeah, so very close yet so far, I guess. You probably haven't had very long to reflect on this since you crossed the finish line, but it has been an incredible experience. And your first Volvo Ocean race, I mean, you know, what do you have to say about it, the whole thing? Yeah, I, you know, I've said all along, I've been, you know, loving the experience. And uh, that was so true the whole way of in this league. It was such a tight battle with um, Dong Feng, you know, the whole way around the Baltic. And then we split and they went and what well, turned out to be the right side of the exclusion zone and we went there it turned out to be the wrong way and uh yeah that's racing i guess and um yeah we'll have to live with it but um yeah so close um so just yeah pretty gutted like everyone's been so much so much effort and um just couldn't quite do it and in terms of your experiences obviously olympic gold medal how does this experience add up against something like that i guess this one's just you know especially now like we've done three days with pretty much no sleep so um there's quite a lot of emotion going on now and um, yeah, just, you know, it's, it's pretty, uh, has been an amazing journey. So, um, you know, we'll, it's going to be tough for a little bit, but we'll, um, you know, we'll make sure we enjoy it and try and reflect on, you know, just what we've um, achieved because, you know, I guess going around the world in itself is a um, good achievement and um, yeah, that, that'll uh, sink in once the disappointment of not winning will um, pass it, I guess. All right, Blair, we're going to let you go. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. That's back to you now. Blair Took with uh, Amy Monkman. Remember on board Matt Fraber from one Kiwi to another. Uh, Peter Burling is down on the dog at the moment with Andy Green. Let's hear from him. Uh, Pete Burling, uh, Olympic gold, America's Cup win, just couldn't quite make it the Triple Crown this time. Yeah, well, we uh, definitely gave it a good effort there today. Um, you yeah, know, we probably didn't have the best league on our behalf, but, you yeah, know, we fought back and, you yeah, know, got, um, got to you know, have a pretty good shot this afternoon. And, uh, you know, it's pretty incredible. You sail 110 days or whatever it is on the water and actually a bit more than that. And, uh, you yeah, know, it all comes down to, you know, a half-hour decision as to, you know, what side of a TSS you go, um, you yeah, know, coming in the coast here. And uh, it's a pretty uh, crazy way to end it, but I think it just shows you how close this race has been. And, you yeah, know, it's been an incredible experience, incredible group of people, and I enjoyed every minute of it. But, um, yeah, a bit of a shame it didn't go away today. Well, some of your Kiwi fans must have slipped something into your water when you were down in Auckland because you turned the race around from uh, not so good to being incredible, having a chance for the win right here. 
Yeah, you know, we're um, obviously pretty proud of that. You know, we, uh, I think we're all pretty disappointed with how we're going at the beginning of the race. And, you know, to be able to turn around in Auckland, take, uh, you know, three league wins, um, you know, especially the one in the Southern Ocean was uh, pretty special. And, you know, to even have a shot today is, you know, it's probably something that we didn't think was uh, overly achievable, you know, halfway through the race. But, you know, I mean, it's an incredible effort by everyone on board. And, uh, you know, pretty cool to be part of um, part of this. But obviously a shame, you um, you know, as well that we couldn't quite finish it off today. And tell us how difficult it was, that decision to go around the TSS, the West or the East one. Uh, what was the angst on board like? Yeah, well, we thought it was a pretty easy one. Um, you know, we were set up pretty high and uh, you know, it looked, looked better on the, the forecast model we chose to follow. So, you know, um, yeah, we kind of knew we were a, a bit screwed, you know, coming down that last run with the breeze was about a you know, 30 degrees different direction to what it should have been, making it kind of dead down one. So, it, uh, yeah, it was pretty painful, but um, yeah, what can you do? Have you enjoyed the experience, your Volvo Ocean race? What have you enjoyed about it? Yeah, you know, I um, really enjoyed it. You know, it's been uh, you know, a hell of a challenge and uh, you know, a lot of good fun at the same time. And uh, it's definitely uh, you're going to be some memories I have for the rest of my life. Excellent. And uh, skipping uh, a boat the next go around? <laughs> I'll have to wait and see. Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. OK, great. Thanks very much, Pete Burling. And uh, well, Sal, great to see you here on the dock. Peter Burling from Team Brunel, this edition of the Volvo Ocean Race, obviously being his first, along with Carl Langford, one of the trimmers from uh, Oracle USA in the America's Cup. And let's hear what he's got to say after an extraordinary finish to this edition of the Volvo Ocean Race. Kyle, your team certainly gave fans a reason to be absolutely crazily glued to the tracker for this last leg. How does it feel to have finally reached the end? Uh, it's an amazing feeling to have finished the race. Of course, we're a bit disappointed with the result. Uh, it was a tough last leg for us. You know, we kind of put ourselves on the back foot on the first night and we're kind of doing our best to catch up from there. But yeah, other than uh, finishing third, which I think is still a great achievement for the team based on where we were halfway around the world. Um, you know, we're just all absolutely stoked to finish the race and uh, yeah, an amazing feeling across the finish line and, and complete the thing. And how has it, how does it feel docking in and just to, you know, when you're kind of finally, it all comes to an end and you have a moment to reflect and you dock in. I mean, how long is it going to take for us to know if you're going to be here again in the next lineup for the Volvo Ocean Race? <laughs> Dare I ask that question? Uh, no, well, I think, uh, you know, at the start of the race, I wouldn't have thought that I would survive the race and uh, fortunately I have. And I think it's something that gets in your blood and, you know, for sure I'd love the opportunity to do it again and, you know, finish higher at the podium for sure. New generation of Volvo Ocean Race sailors it is. Thanks, Carl, and let you get back to your family. Back to you now. Carl Langford from Team Brunel and uh, Annie, you know, one thing that we've seen a lot here is, uh, well, there's some highs and some lows and for Turn the Tidal Plastic as they come in now, they're finishing this Volvo Ocean race not in the position that they want to be in. However, with the hard work they put on the water now, we know it is going to come down to the import series. Yeah, and what an exciting finish, you know, that is going to be. And on board that team, they have some very strong import sailors. I mean, they've got Olympics on their list, uh, Francesco as well, another double Olympian, um, uh, America's Cup sailor. So they're going to be a force we reckon them with in that, in that import race. Oh, Liz Wardley, one of the key players on board, turned the tide on plastic. And this is a team that, you know, we've, we've said this time and time again, but we're talking 10 sailors on board, 50-50 male, female, and a young crew as well. It would have been very easy for this team just to go, well, we're here about just developing talent and spreading a good message about plastic pollution. But it's not what they did. They decided, no, we want to be as strong and as competitive as possible. Yeah, they might have young sailors, but they're all very talented sailors and very competitive sailors. And, uh, you know, they just come from different backgrounds. So. This race is about experience, and this team didn't come in with experience. I mean, obviously some of them, Liz Wardley, this is her third race. She's an incredibly experienced team member, and I'm sure she's brought a lot to this team, as has Dee. But there are a lot of inexperienced sailors on this boat in terms of Volvo Ocean racing, but they're incredible sailors in other ways, and they're going to have learned so much in this race. And hugs all round for the sailors on board. Francesca Klapcic, a double Olympian on board Turn the Tide on Plastic. And that's that kind of raw talent that we're talking about here. It's not about uh, learning how to sail a boat fast. It's just about transferring those skills. Yeah, I mean, Francesca's been incredible in this race. She's also an incredible character. And uh, she has loved it. And I think they can't help but smile today. There's a lot of smiles on faces. It's good. 
And you say we have done it, and that's absolutely been your leadership style throughout this race. You've been in it with them, amongst them, the whole way through. And as a result, you've been in it and amongst it with the rest of the fleet the whole way through. I know, and that didn't change this leg. It was like the longest import race we've ever done. There was a lot of corners to turn. We did a lot of visits to a lot of countries, but they gave it 100%. They left nothing in the tank, and um, it was a close finish. It was, it was what we wanted. And I guess the other thing that you wanted ideally was to have a boat between yourselves and Sun Hunkai Scallywag, but we are thanking you because it is going to be a cracker of an import race. We did not need to leave more stress on that last race, trust me. I just asked any of these boats to get between us and Scallywag and none of them did it. <laughs> I'm going to have to have words. I think you are. Dee, congratulations, an incredible achievement that you've all achieved, as you so rightly say. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it one more time for Turn the Tide on Plastic! Dee Kafari, the skipper of Turn the Tide on Plastic. And, you know, Annie, all of these skippers can feel rightly proud about what they've led their team through, but Dee Kafari taking on a little bit more, potentially. Yeah, I mean, you can just see, I think, there, uh, the emotion and how tired she is. And... Uh, what an achievement for her. I mean, yeah, she had a big task. She is taking an, a very inexperienced team and uh, she's done them proud. I mean, they had incredible speed and I'm so impressed with them, especially in the Southern Ocean. I mean, that was an incredible leg for them. But as we say, we're not talking about inexperienced sailors, we're talking about Olympians just trying to transfer their skills. Olympians like Francesca Klapcic, who's down on the dock now. Francesca, uh, amazing. How are you feeling? Uh, you did a great job. Not much sleep in the last few days, though. Yeah, no, it was not so much sleep in the last days. It was really short leg, but really tough. We had so many maneuvers, peeling, and different wind conditions. So it was a 100% like 24-hour job. Uh, I think, I mean, I'm super happy to be here, and it's a bold feeling, you know, like it's. It's the finish of the huge project and at the same time I'm happy to be here and at the same time it's like, oh, tomorrow this is over, you know, so uh, it's like, I think it's like, I think it's a, a bit of the feeling of everybody. We spent one year together and now we are used to, you know, like spend so much time together, emotions and everything. And then... It's a family, you've got a, you've got a huge family now. Yeah, no, of course. And it's not only about the teammates, it's also about all the Volvo family in general. You know, you, you come ashore and everybody is hugging you. And it's so nice, it's, it's great. Well, you have always been one of the biggest smiles, the best dancers, <laughs> you bring real best passion. Dancers. <laughs> and it's not over, we have an, still one award dinner. So you will dance too. Well, Francesca Klapsic, back to you, Niall. Francesca Klapsic from Turn the Tide on Plastic, double Olympian now, Volvo Ocean Race competitor. And so far, we have got six teams on the dock here in The Hague, having completed racing. We have still got more boats to come in. We've still got more action to come. We've still got some guys scallywag. They are making their way in right now. You can see them just on the left-hand side. They're pulling in. And Amy Monkman right now is with Annalise Murphy. Yeah, I'm here with Annalise Murphy. Annalise, that you look so happy right now. This must be an incredible moment for you and one very emotional journey, I can imagine. Yeah, it's, um, oh, I'm delighted. I think everyone on the boat is delighted. You know, we finished, finished off nicely. You know, the fight right to the end, really close. And yeah, can't believe we're here finally. It's cool. And your background is Olympic sailing. What advice would you give to anybody who comes from that background or who is climbing those ranks who wanted to become an offshore sailor like you have? I think I was pretty lucky how I managed to do it. You know, I was just right time, right place, and got the opportunity from Dee to join this race. But, you know, if you're moving from Olympic sailing and you want to try and do this, you know, just try and get as much experience as possible so that, you know, you've got a really good background to start the race in. I was, like, starting basically not knowing what I was doing the whole time, and I wished, looking back on it, that I'd done a lot more to be more prepared for it. But, um, yeah, it's... Uh, worth it when you're finished you're like wow there's been good times and bad times but you know now it just seems like good times yeah fantastic thank you Annalise we'll get you let you get back to your shore career and celebrations back to you now thanks Amy let's go down to the dock at the moment to hear from the reactions from Sun Hunkai Scallywag
David, your team has been through an incredible amount, both physically and emotionally, but you're here, you're at The Hague. How are you feeling? Oh, I just got asked that question by the OBR. Very mixed emotions, really. Um, personally, I'm very uh, proud to have finally finished something I've wanted to do for 20 years. Extremely proud of uh, you know the team, um, both on and off the water. We're very tight and we have gone through a lot. Um, I'm very happy to have you know, to be able to do it with my mate, who's also my sponsor. Um, so then, and the fact that he got, did the last leg with us was fantastic for me and the whole team. But also, it's uh, you know, it's it's pretty sad. I, I didn't finish it with my best mate that I started with. So, bit mixed emotions, but I'm glad it's finished. What I have to say is, what an incredible tribute to your friend. What you guys have achieved as a team, and the way you've achieved it, so tight knit and close and positive throughout. It's it's been incredible to watch. Yeah, thanks, I suppose. Um, but, you know, I think uh, coming in here, this, we, I, th I worked out we've actually got the youngest overall crew. We've got four or five under 30. So um, all they're doing is talking about going again next time and all the boss and I are talking about is don't have a beer together, get drunk and decide to do it. So we'll see what happens in the next couple of months. OK, well, that is a brilliant note to end it on, David Witt. Thank you very much, and congratulations to you and the rest of your team. I'm now going to throw to my co-host, Ruka, who is with Anami Kabez. David Witt, skipper of St. Guy Scallywag. He was mentioning his sponsor. He was on board for this final leg. So let's hear from Mr. Lee now. Uh, Anami... Well, we're going to go back in a minute to uh, Andy Green and more reactions from the dock. We're waiting to hear a little bit more from Sun Hong Kai Skellywag. And as David Witt was saying there, this is a team that has been through so much, but crucially has finished this edition of the Volvo Ocean Race, something that was very difficult to do considering the circumstances. They've sailed into The Hague here, still keeping the chances of finishing in sixth place alive, finishing just behind Turn the Hunt Tide on Plastic. But let's now hear from Mr. Lee and Andy Green on the dock. Kimi. Mr. Lee, uh, you, w we saw you driving the boat on the departure from Gothenburg. Well, I usually say you drive it like you stole it, but you drive it like you own it. <laughs> How was it? Yeah, it was a very good fun. Uh, so we're very happy with the start. Unfortunately, we couldn't deliver the result at the finish, but it was a very close race with all seven competitors coming within, I don't know, half an hour, an hour of each other, right? So unbelievable finish. And the whole experience being involved in the Volvo Ocean race, uh, just tell us what your thoughts are. Uh, there were many highs, there were many lows, the win into Hong Kong, obviously the loss of fish, and uh, we're just very glad that it's uh, all finished. Excellent. Well, thank you very much. And uh, we, we, we really enjoyed seeing you racing out off the start line. Are uh, you happy with that start? He was happy with that. <laughs> I can't complain. <laughs> Excellent, Mr. Lee. Thanks very much. Back to you in the studio. Uh, thanks, Andy, the sponsor and backer of St. Hunkai Scallywag. And Annie, you know, I, it's important to point out, I mean, this team, it's a privateer team. You know, this is a private group, different to all the sort of commercial backing that we've seen in other boats. Yeah, a very different team and also, you know, a team that have been a sailing team for quite a long time before this race. So very special for them to transition from doing the Sydney Hobart and the races they've been doing in and around Hong Kong and on Australia into the Volvo Ocean Race. I mean, a, a very different race. And I think, as David Witt said, they're a very young team. A very young team. And I think we're hoping actually to get into the studio. Fingers crossed we might get a chance to, to speak to uh, Ben Piggott, Nipper, as he's known on board. I mean, this is the youngest person by, by my eye that's been in the Volvo Ocean Race, and somebody that only a few years ago basically introduced himself to David Witt and said, can I come and clean your boat? That's an incredible journey. Yeah, and I think actually if you speak to a lot of the guys on board, on board the, the boat, you know, David Witt is someone who's given them all opportunities in the past on, on the other boats that they've sailed. And, you know, to be able to make that step from what they've been doing to Volvo Ocean Race is incredible. And I think, as he said, they're all just looking forward to the next one and what they're going to do the next. And it, that's, I mean, in part, that's due to this under 30 rule that's come in. That's given uh, a chance for should we say some fresh blood to come in but also important to reflect on the fact that this edition of the Volvo Ocean Race we've got the female incentivized rule as well yeah and you know both of those rules are really in place to allow new people into the race because this is a race that rewards experience I mean we're seeing on these other boats that have come in this will be the third fourth fifth eighth lap in the case of Bauer Becking and the reason that 
they've done it so many times is because you do just get better and better as you do this race. And so the only way to get that experience is to be able to put under 30s and, and, and women, because we haven't been in the race for such a long time, that opportunity to get alongside that experience and learn from them. And uh, I mean, important having you up on the stage here. I mean, not, not only as a two-time Volvo Ocean Race sailor, but you've actually been handed a little bit of a task, I think, from the race management to sort of carry this momentum forward because the, the job's not done. Uh, the, the job's nowhere near done. And, you know, Volvo Ocean Race have led the way by bringing in a rule to incentivize mixed teams. And therefore, we've seen women on each of these boats. But that's not the end of the story. You know, we want to see girls winning this, winning this race and, and, and lots of girls. And, you know, we're, you know, we're nowhere near 50-50 yet in this race and in the rest of sailing. So, uh, yeah, we are trying to carry that on. Um, Volvo Ocean Race are working with the Magenta Project, which is um, a charity we set up after the, la the race last time with Team SCA. And um, in fact, we'll be having a group of girls delivering this boat, um, second guy Scallywag, back to Lisbon and uh, giving five new girls an opportunity to learn the Volvo 65 because we're starting to get ready for the next race. So the next crop of, of female sailors, or indeed Volvo Ocean Race sailors, is starting to come up now. They are starting to push their way in. But, but right now, let's go back down to the dock. Vestas 11th Hour Racing, they are now making their way in. And, you know, Annie, you've been a competitor in this uh, edition of the Volvo Ocean Race. Charlie Enright, Mark Tao, co-skippers, really, of this team. And they've created a very strong team ethos. And I mean, I guess it's fair to say they've needed it through everything that this team has experienced. Yeah, I mean, testament to this team that they've managed to get through the hurdles that have really been thrown at them. You know, um, they they came into this race quite late, uh, but they managed to put in an incredible performance at the start of this race, given that. And um, they've had, yeah, some real challenges to, to face as a team, but they have managed to pull through them. And, you know, whenever you see Charlie, he's always got a good word to say, which is incredible given what they've been through. And a tough finish for them on this leg coming into The Hague here in last place. But they were third on the uh, flyby into Aarhus. I saw those images of Jenna Mai Hansen standing on the side, waving to her family. She could see her house, tears in her eyes. I mean, that's special for Danish crew and a, and a Danish flag boat as well. They delivered at that moment. Yeah, and again, you know, this final result does not reflect how they've been doing in this race or this leg. As you say, they were on the podium for most of this leg. Um, so they might be disappointed now, but um, yeah, what a team, really. Uh, one that has stuck together. Stacey Jackson, my former teammate on board, and uh, she's only had good things to say about this, this team. And I know the fans of Best of Eleventh Hour Racing will have been desperate to see this team punch to the front, but sadly it wasn't to be. Let's hear from the skipper now, Charlie Enright of Best of Eleventh Hour Racing. This is always my favourite bit. Charlie Enright handing the children back over. Probably a wise decision. <laughs> oh, and cannon fire as well. Charlie, we've said it often, your team have been through a huge amount, but you've done amazing things with what you've had, so you must be proud. Yeah, certainly. Um, disappointing result um, for our team here in this last leg, uh, but it shouldn't take away from everything that we've accomplished throughout the course of the campaign. We got a great group of folks. Um, you know, as you mentioned, we've uh, we've been through a lot, and I don't know that uh, any other group could have dealt with it the way that we did. And it's something special. And um, you know, we're going to continue to work together moving forward. And uh, we got a great group of sponsors, great group on the shore. We're slowly drifting away from the dock right now, so I should probably tend to the bow line. But um, yeah, tough way to go out, certainly. But um, you know, we have one more opportunity here with the import this weekend, and uh, it'll be tough to say goodbye to all this, that's for sure. 
I can imagine. And you did have a mission to put in a strong performance on the water, which you have done. You've shown team spirit, you've shown resilience and bounce back ability, but also what you've done off the water with your sustainability message, and that is equally as important. So what are your reflections on both of those, your, perform your performance on and off the water? You know, on the water, obviously, we ran into some, uh, some hiccups along the way, so the result isn't really what we'd like it to be. Um, you know, but off the water, uh, you know, we've accomplished a ton, you know, leading by example in this race, uh, making quantifiable change. Um, you know, it's, it's such a pleasure working with both Vestas and 11th Hour and, uh, you know, sailing for something that you believe in and, um, you know, something that's helped make in this world a better place. So it's been unbelievably rewarding and, um, you know, we're glad that, uh, you know, we had priorities on and off the water. It was a wonderful thing. Absolutely, and it's very much in line with the sustainability message that the Volvo Ocean Race is pushing. So we thank you so much for your efforts along with 11th Hour Racing. Thank you. And let's hear it one more time for them. It's Vestas 11th Hour Racing! Charlie Enright, skipper of Vestas 11th Hour Racing. And let's continue to stay with them and hear more from the crew. Jenna Mai Hansen, the Danish sailor on board, with tears in her eyes as she sailed past her home city in Aarhus earlier on. Let's hear from her now. Yeah, no, we're slowly drifting away from each other here. I'm going to reach across with the microphone and try and get a few words from you. Congratulations on completing the Volvo Ocean Race. Just tell everybody at home what sailing a short leg like that is like in terms of intensity and with all the position changes and everything that's happened. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, first time for me finishing the Volvo Ocean Race, obviously, but this leg has been crazy as well as, as a lot of the others like I think this uh, this last leg have been what all the race has been about we've had a lot of wind we had no wind we've been first we've been last like uh, intensity have been full on all the time not a lot of sleep and a lot of sail changes so uh, it's been full on for all of us absolutely in highs and lows now if we're just going to talk about one of the highs for you must have been that rounding in Aarhus you probably haven't seen but there are the most incredible pictures of you waving to the fans and making a heart with your hands what was that moment like for you having that fly by in your hometown yeah coming home to Aarhus was absolutely amazing uh, one of the highest like the high points of this whole race for me uh, I'm so proud of being Danish and <laughs> so proud of going into Aarhus where there are so many people I could never have imagined um, just that so many people came to look at all of us and look at the Volvo Ocean Race. Hopefully it will do something for Denmark and for Aarhus and maybe there'll be a stopover in Denmark once. Now rumour has it that you could actually see your house from the flyby. What was it like sharing that moment with your team shouting, you know, that's my house, that's my house. I know, I was trying to point out it's there and they said, is it that building? No, that building there. So <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, and my sister, my mom and dad and Ketch and my crew from the Olympic campaign was there. Like it was really great and amazing. And then... Um, Sorry, I'm just, <laughs> you're drifting away from me. We might have to say goodbye. Thank you so much, Jenna, for talking to us. And uh, back to Niall. Thank you very much. Jenna Mai Hansen down on the dock at the moment. Know. But Simon Fisher, the navigator, has got more to say about this unbelievable finish into the Hague. He's down there with Andy Green. Uh, Sci-Fi, this is the first time that you've uh, slipped your grip on the trophy. Previous winner of the Volvo Ocean Race as navigator. Has this one been tougher? Certainly been closer. So, yes, yeah, it's definitely been a tough race, uh, whether it's condition-wise or just the uh, the quality of the field, really. It's, it's, it's been incredible to have a race this close and this hard, you know. Uh, I think... Uh, yeah, maybe last time we had a little bit of a speed advantage, but I think any speed advantage anyone had in this race was uh, was slim, and you had to work so hard to, to inch out a win. It was it, it's really been a tough race, but a uh, very rewarding one. <laughs> uh, and you've put a cracking group of lads and lasses together. Um, the team's come out stronger. Go again. Yeah, yeah, no, Charlie and Mark did a fantastic job of putting a great group of guys together. A no, really, really strong team with a great atmosphere. And, uh, yeah, it's fair to say we didn't have our fair share of luck, but we, we've had our highs as well. And uh, You had some spectacular moments. I mean, the first leg for one, uh, you, you, you were going on with the, the, the winning ways that you had with Abu Dhabi Ocean Racing. I mean, you are one of the finest navigators out there. What are the challenges that you've seen? Uh, how, how hard really is it? The last few days is just an example. Oh, the, the last... The last couple of days just really summed up how tough a race this was you know it was you know we had every point of sail it was tactical it was about speed we had our usual dose of 35 knots that we seem to have had every leg this race and uh, yeah just just a massive challenge and uh, 
I know we, we put it out there a bit. We wanted to go out with a bang and uh, maybe we, we picked the side that we thought we had the best chance of winning in. Unfortunately, we didn't win our side and our side didn't win. But, uh, you know, we, we took a bit of risk and, and that's yacht racing, you know. You, sometimes you've got to try. Uh, I'm, I'm a percentage guy normally, but yeah, last night we put it out there. But, uh, you know. And this obsession is surely not over for you. Well, they say you're only as good as your last race, and uh, I don't want to fit on that, finish on that one, so it looks like we'll be back in a few years' time. <laughs> Excellent. Simon Fisher, always good. Nice to see you, mate. Back to you in the studio. Well, thanks, Andy. Simon Fisher, the navigator out there on the water, fighting all the way to the line, but that's it. We have now got seven teams on the docks, and now it's the turn of the sailors to join me in the studio. Hopefully we'll be able to get the skippers, the navigators, the sailors that have made a difference and ask them, but it's all going to be about Dongfeng race team and that, this incredible finish into the finish line here in Hague. While we're waiting for the skippers and the sailors to join me, let's have a look at their journey that has brought them here to The Hague, the ultimate destination. Created in 2014, Dongfeng race team's core ambition is to bring offshore sailing to China and the Chinese people. Skippered by world-class French solo sailor Charles Cordrelia, the team is a multinational mix of young rising stars and offshore legends, including two brand new additions with Carolyn Brower and Marie Roux. Together, the team worked hard, forming a bond that would see them through to the end of the race, setting their sights on nothing other than victory. Yes, it's uh, amazing that we never win a leg since the start. Uh, we have many opportunities and we fail. And of, of course, uh, winning a leg is is the best thing, is give you a big boost and uh, we really want it, but actually, as I say, the most important is to be to have a steady result. If you're always on the podium at the end of the World Ocean Race, you can win even without winning a leg, I think. If we continue like that, uh, I'm happy. The goal is to be at the first on the overall, not to win a leg. After finishing third in the last edition, they were marked early on as one of the favourites and started the first two legs with podium finishes and a reputation for fiercely high speeds. A really difficult start for us, then a first night a nightmare, and first uh, second day a nightmare, very po big problem of speed. In Gibraltar we hit many things, we had to do a reverse for that, and after that we find the speed of Bongfeng was back and uh, we managed to come back slowly, slowly, slowly. During the first three legs, Dongfeng race team were constantly trading blows with Mafre on the water, and with the Spanish team edging out to take the win into Cape Town and then Melbourne, Charles knew he needed to find something extra. I think we, we improve every day, and um, if we lead the race during 80%, we, we should be able to lead for more, so we are going to work on that for the next one. During the next leg, Mafre was stuck fast in the doldrums as Dongfeng race team sailed around them and pushed on to finish second, gaining valuable extra points and keeping the victory chances alive. Of course, uh, we wanted to arrive first here, but it's a good news for us and um, we are coming back on Mafre, taking point. So I think it's a very good leg. Early on leg six, a technical failure at the nav station meant navigator Pascal Badigari was forced to make a difficult decision. With Mafre in sight, the team chose to follow their closest competitors move for move, trusting it would not let them down. Wind, completely opposite direction of uh, where we want to go. So. Really, really complicated. Uh, not at a good position. I think we should be more east, but we follow uh, Mafre. And uh, for the first time, you make a really bad choice, I think. However, the two race leaders found themselves trailing the rest of the fleet by a significant margin. We are offshore with Map3 and uh, fighting for fighting together again. I don't know who is the mouse, who is the cat. But... Unbelievably, they closed down the 100 mile deficit in the final 24 hours. Mafre finishing third and Dongfeng race team just behind in fourth, their first non podium finish. Sorry for turn the time because they did a fantastic race. <laughs> I think they deserve uh, the third place, but uh, that's silly. On what was one of the toughest Southern Ocean legs in the history of the race, Cordrelia and his squad showed their mettle, pushing when they could, preserving crew and equipment when it was needed, and rounding Cape Horn in third place. They chased hard and claimed second on the leg, and that result, combined with a fifth place finish by Mafre, put Cordrelia's crew at the top of the leaderboard for the first time in the race. While Team Brunel led for most of the leg, as the miles closed towards the finish, Dongfeng race team briefly grabbed the lead. But in a cruel twist of fate, 
fog, extremely light winds and tide combined to push the Chinese team back into fourth. Mafre, deep in the fleet with 24 hours to go, unbelievably stole the win and back to the top of the scoreboard. Honestly, when we were 2.5 miles ahead of Brunel, uh, at 18 miles of the finishing line, we were starting to dream about the best. We knew it would be complicated to finish, but not as much as it has been. Leg nine being double points would be make or break for Dongfeng race team. We can find a different way to go to uh, Cardiff. So uh, it's not easy to choose. Uh, no, no special plan for us. Uh, the plan is to, uh, to say well. We always knew this is going to be an important leg and uh, you know, double points. Uh, everyone's going to be pushing really hard. Now that we're in front, we just got to make sure we stay in front. They didn't disappoint and came away with a solid podium finish. But just as Cordrelia was getting the upper hand on Mafre, Team Brunel, after winning the double points transatlantic leg, were now a very real threat as a three-way race for the title began to form. Yes, it's uh, nice, but uh, it's a very short lead and uh, very short lead to Mafre, but also now uh, to Brunel, which is doing a fantastic comeback. So it's going to be interesting to follow for uh, people, I think. It's not, uh, the race is far from finish. To hold back Team Brunel and Mafre, Dongfrong race team needed nothing less than a top result on leg 10. But after rounding the top of the United Kingdom in second, their once reliable straight line speed let them down and they lost out to the chasing boats and finished fourth. Combined with a win by Team Brunel and a podium for Mafre, this has set up the closest finish in race history, with every position on the podium to be decided on the final leg. Cordrelia and his crew knew what they needed to do. Beat Team Brunel and Mafre, and the Volvo Ocean Race trophy would be theirs to hold. And all of this has led to an unbelievable showdown on leg 11. And we now have the winning team, or at least three of the sailors, here with us in the studio. Charles Cordrelia, the skipper. We've got Chen Jin Hao, and we have got, well, the, the man of the hour, the man of the leg, Pascal Badigari, the navigator. Firstly, Charles the trophy, the Volvo Ocean Race trophy. We saw some pretty emotive scenes when you were lifting it on the dock. Just how much did it mean to hold it up high as you're standing there on your boat, surrounded by your team members, as skipper now winning the race? Uh, it's amazing. I remember the last time with Frank when we held it. I couldn't believe it. Uh, my life was not, my, uh, my life was to sail single on it. I was, my dream was to win the Vendée Globe and I, I discovered this race and I love it so much. I knew it, of course, it was mine, but I, I didn't think I would be part of it. And uh, it's all my, it's my life since 10 years. And I mean, I've been working so hard. I made so much sacrifice. We all made so much sacrifice. Pascal, me, to be here. And uh, it was our dream and now we get it. And a, an incredibly difficult leg. I mean, there must have been times in the last 10 hours when you thought, ah, oh, we're not going to be able to close them down. What was it like being on that, that inshore side and knowing that the breeze had to go just right for you to make it? Well, it's, a, it's not something, it's something we prepare since the start. Uh, usually uh, with Marcel Ventriest on a, our navigator on shore, and uh, he told us, you have to go there. You have, he pushed a lot because last time he pushed us to go south on the crossing the Atlantic, and I didn't believe it and uh, didn't trust him and I made the wrong call to go north and uh, this time uh, Pascal pushed a lot and said we go there he did a... <laughs> and uh, we say okay we go <laughs> so we have learned something to trust our choice and uh, yeah and after of course we knew that we will be far behind for a long time and we know it's going to be happen on the last and uh, on the last schedule we were like 27 miles from the finishing line they were 20 miles and we thought it was done, and I just do a small routing with the same wind, and I say, we can be one mile ahead of them, so let's push. I wake up everybody, and, uh, and we say, we have to do it because uh, we lost a few miles during the last night. We say, no, it's not possible. We're not going to lose because of that. And uh, here we are. After some bad luck, I think on the uh, most of the on bigger part of the leg of the race, now we got a, a small luck to finish ahead. And it's good. I think we deserve it. I mean, you keep looking at the trophy here. Have you decided where your name is going to go? Which one of these squares is going to be yours? Uh, by, uh, on the top. Huh? <laughs> the That's top. good. I'm the last one to, to win after it's finished. <laughs> we have to change the trophy. 
<laughs> but I wish it's not only my name because it's a, a team job and I wish I can put more names. Well, well, let's talk about that team. Chen Jinhao, you have been part of Dongfeng Race Team, two editions. First, no experience. Now you're here, winner of the Volvo Ocean Race. An amazing few years. I mean, um, I'm uh, so lucky can in, the, in my life can meet these uh, guys all my life. He's a very good uh, leader and he's the best uh, navigator. I learned a lot because they always push me, push me. Oh, come on, you, you can do more, you can do more. And um, yeah, we very have a good sponsor from Dongfeng. We did the first the Volvo Ocean Race together and we win the three place. And after that, the sponsor trusts us and give us biggest uh, spot and the biggest uh, trust. Let us uh, have uh, more time to prepare for this time. That's why we can succeed the uh, one important mini. And uh, also we have a good crew this time, more important. And the show is, he faced again, he all the winners. We're training together. And that's why we, this time we say, I think, uh, yeah. Well, uh, one right, one reason why you guys were successful <coughs> was that move. Pascal, I, I need to ask you, as a navigator, as a tactician, it must be so difficult to be the person to make that final call. Was it difficult? Was it challenging to go, we, we're going to go inshore? Or in your eyes, was it clear? No, it was not really, really clear, you know. <laughs> The stranger last leg to finish the Rosa race. Very short one, only 700 miles. Uh, we have to go to turn the boy inside the marina. Uh, <laughs> what a strange finish. Uh, we have to, to turn around the virtual mark in a place where there is no wind. And after uh, sailing uh, uh, along Denmark, uh, which uh, a lot of uh, TSS zone, uh, side of bank, uh, so not really easy. Uh, you know, there, there is a lot of place you, you are not able to sail. Uh, so you have to make a big decision. And uh, we have uh, very well prepared this, uh, this leg, come as the other one, <laughs> for sure. And uh, for us, it was sure, uh, it was a big decision because uh, we, we know we are going to lose, to lose, to lose, to lose. And if we, are, if we, if we gain, it just at the end, the last time, the last moment, I think uh, we have decided uh, during this revolution race to win just at the end. <laughs> <laughs> well, Charles, how, how fitting that to win this edition of the Volvo Ocean Race, it did take a, a big decision by your team because this edition, it's been so close. All the teams have been trading places at the front. So little difference in speed. Yes, it's an amazing race. It's one design race. With, uh, Six, seven team with very good seller on each one. We know of the Volvo on each one. We know of the America's Cup. We know of the Olympics. You have the best seller there. And uh, wow, it was crazy. We didn't imagine why it would be so hard. A lot of people thought it would be a fight between Mapfre and us uh, in the middle of the race. Then come back Brunel with a fantastic three or four win leg to win. So it was just crazy. And uh, us more and more frustration each time because we were always Leading the race, leading the race, or close to leading with Mafre, but no, not winning a leg, and always, oh, we lost again so much points, we could be so far ahead, and of <laughs> course, we couldn't stop thinking about Newport, where if we win in Newport, the we'll finish would have been much, so much easier. But at least on this leg, we were, we become the, the underdog, nobody was expecting us, everybody was speaking about Brunel, so the pressure was on them. The, the, the nine times the Volvo never win. Same for Mapfre, five times never win, so say, the pressure is on them, not anymore on us. And we sell with maybe we're a bit with less pressure, and we had some, of course, but uh, we have no, we just have to be ahead. There is no, we did uh, what we think at the end, and uh, we paid. And, and, and also, I mean, Pascal, the, the race being so close, it must make this moment extra special. You had to fight so hard to win this trophy. No, it's quite completely crazy because uh, we know uh, we start uh, Volvo Ocean Race since uh, four years, five years, I don't know, uh, from, the, from the last campaign. Uh, 
And uh, we are working very hard since uh, quite uh, two years. And uh, behind our head, uh, the small things, we can win this race. So we're thinking uh, every minute, every day, during two years about that, uh, focus on that all the time, all the time, all the time. And uh, it was a bit uh, uh, confusion during this race because I think one, two, three, four times we can make break, you know? And uh, sometimes we are, I, don't, I don't like to say we are not lucky, <laughs> but, I, but it was sometimes a little bit uh, the feeling. And uh, so I'm really happy how we finish because uh, we finish thinking, doing all what we think, all together. And, uh, and the result is uh, completely amazing. But, uh, I said in Cardiff, if we, want, if we want to win the race, we have to win one of the, the two last legs. But we have choice of the best scenery. Voilà. Winning just at the end, just the last one. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Winning in style. And I mean, you guys know, I mean, last edition of the Volvo Ocean Race, you had your own hardships in the Southern Ocean with the, with the mask breaking. This time around in the Volvo Ocean Race, any fans of the race have been following it, you'll know that Mafre had their own hardship. For those of you that missed that dramatic moment, the moment where Xabi Fernandez faced a really difficult situation about how to regain the initiative in the Volvo Ocean Race, here it is. Let's just remind ourselves of just how tough the conditions down south can be. So Charles, you've been down there. You've You've seen moments like this. Just talk us through what this kind of thing is like when you're there, faced with the realization that your sail is just breaking in two. It's better than breaking the mask. We could finish the leg. We couldn't. Uh, of course, it's, yeah, it's double ball leg. Something I was against it because here we are when it's happened. Uh, but it's part of the race. I mean, it's to go faster than the other one, but also not to break the boat. And I think that's what we did very well in the south. Last time when we break the mast, everybody said it was our fault. I don't think so. And uh, this time another mast has been has broken. And, and uh, I think so it happens. Sometimes it's unfair. But sometimes yeah, there is a reason because you do push too much. And on this leg going in the south, we didn't push as much as we will do usually because we were leading the race and it was not, we didn't want to have the same Poland and uh, Malfrey, and uh, that's part of the race. And uh, last time we were leading the race when we break, must break. So, but it's, it's the goal of the race: going faster, but don't break the boat, don't break anything, because when you break, you pay it very expensive. It's been an incredible uh, a journey to see you know, all of your teams over the, the eight months, the nine months, the year, two years of preparation and then competition. As you say, it's not just about racing on the water. It's about how you handle the team, how you handle the boat. Congratulations to you guys. In a minute here, we're going to have, uh, we're going to have uh, Mafre come and join us here. The, the trophy's behind me. Sadly, it didn't go to Xavi Fernandez. Dong Fong race team get that honor, but we're going to be able to hear from the other teams in this edition of the Volvo Ocean Race. But before Mafre come and join us here in the studio, let's take a look at what led them to finish here in The Hague and finish second in this edition of the Volvo Ocean Race. Mafre entered this edition with the aim of being the first Spanish entry to win the Volvo Ocean Race. Winning this race, winning this Volvo Ocean Race this time, of course, will be very, very important for me personally, for the team, which uh, we've been together a long time now, and for the whole country, I guess, because uh, we've been we've been trying to win it uh, a lot of years now, and we've been very close before, especially 2011 and 12 with Telefonica. That's why we are working every day towards that. We will fight every day to try to win this race finally. Xabi Fernandez co-skippered Mafre's 2014-15 entry, finishing fourth. And now, as skipper for this edition, he pulled together a dream team. Spain's top flight navigator, Juan Villa, was a star recruit. 15 years after winning aboard Ilbrook Challenge in 2001, Villa stepped aboard with four editions under his belt, plus eight America's Cup campaigns, three of them wins. Shabby and Juan's respect for each other has been a cornerstone of their campaign. 
Xavi is, a, is, a, is an excellent leader and uh, he uh, leads by example. Just need to follow really what, what he does and, and, and it's pretty easy. Rob Greenhouse, the hardy Brit and highly respected watch captain, raced with Xavi during Mafre's 2014 campaign and returned for round two, as did Antonio Cubas Mons, Netti, an all-round talent and Mr. Fixit, and the only sailor among the fleet to have his own travelling fan. <laughs> Fernandez, an Olympic gold and silver medalist in the 49er, is from the Basque region of Spain, where physical and mental toughness is prized. And he set out to complete the race with the same talented sailors he started with. Mafre were tipped as pre-race favourites for their strength of crew, committed sponsor and longer preparation time. They set out with a clear game plan. Every boat is going to have his moment, and, you know, that's why our real goal is to start well and make sure we don't have a very bad result at the beginning. And it worked. From Lisbon to Cape Town, they hung on to leg two leaders, Dongfong Race Team, waited for their opportunity, and when the Chinese team made one error... We are f they pounced to clinch podium victory, plus the valuable extra leg win point. Leg three, a Southern Ocean roller coaster dominated by a ball of weather rolling over the fleet from behind, battered the boats and crew. They repeated the trick, overhauling Dongfeng race team again to fly into Melbourne with another bullet and the overall lead by six points. Well, we could uh, pass them and then it's been all, all good for us, yes. It's been hard. So uh, we kept close and, and then, you know, we, we took our opportunity. The mighty Mafre were beginning to look invincible. Then came the equator crossings to and from Hong Kong. All the teams battled with the cloud systems, but in the case of Mafre, the clouds won. On the way up to Hong Kong, they slipped from first to fifth in the space of a day, finishing fourth. That one really big cloud that came through, pressed the fleet, we almost got ourselves um, to the furthest north boat at one stage, and then basically had the people from behind us sail right around us. That was a little bit frustrating, but now daybreak's coming. On the way down to Auckland on leg six, the intense race-long duel with Dongfong race team saw them slip to sixth off the Solomon Islands. Were the two red boats, the red buses, as Bauer Beckett called them, focusing so hard on each other that they took their eye off the bigger picture? Now, there's a couple of things with the setup that I'm always trying to look at on photos when we're in Sopo. There's and uh, what better chance to do <laughs> two metres away from me <laughs> with binoculars, so... Eventually third into Auckland, the mighty Mafre still ruled the overall leaderboard by five points over Dongfong race team. Leg seven turned into the toughest test of all, a 7,600-mile blast from Auckland to Itajaí in Brazil via the infamous Cape Horn. The Southern Ocean lived up to its fearsome reputation. 30, 40, 50, even 60 knot winds hammered the fleet on the anvil of the ocean. While racing through the extreme weather, the team were also fixing damage to their mast track from earlier in the leg. Netty made repairs up the mast in horrendous conditions, an incredible feat. But as they approached Cape Horn, Mafre's mainsail split into two pieces. This forced them to stop in the lee of Cape Horn, make repairs, and nurse their boat into Ijaí. Well, we, we broke the mast track uh, two days after the start, so it was uh, a, big, uh, a big issue. In one sense, we, we've been lucky just break it close by and be able to, to get on shore quite quick and, and prepare it now here with the short team. By the end of leg seven, and with two boats retiring, Mafre still racked up six points, finishing fifth, and demonstrated their tenacity to win overall. Well, uh, things didn't go very well for us this time. I think uh, since uh, very early in the leg, uh, we had a few issues. And then uh, I think we, well, I don't know. If, now we have to see if we manage them well or not, but uh, you know, we got all the way to the horn and then uh, things got even worse and then it's been pretty painful from there. And, you know, now we have to rest and still very close in the, in the leaderboard and we have to you know, get ready and do a good leg next one. You could possibly put the slow start on leg eight down to fatigue. Shabby and his crew had less rest than their closest rivals, Dongfong race team, trailing in sixth up and around the corner of Brazil and on the straight line drag race towards the finish. 
in the fickle run into Newport against an ebb tide. Dong Fong Race Team were in second, just behind Team Brunel. But call it skill, luck, or the karma of sailboat racing, Mafre slid through both of them in the final few boat links to clinch lineups. <laughs> to the frustration of both Dong Fong Race Team and Team Brunel. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Well, I can be happy, really. This is uh, unbelievable. I think, uh, you know, we were always hoping to come back a little bit, but uh, to be honest, we were not expecting to win this leg, so super happy. Mafre were back in the driving seat. Three points clear of Dongfrong race team on the overall leaderboard. Two days into leg nine towards Cardiff, Mafre's push to the north to cover Dongfrong race team saw them fall off the back of the fleet. After two whole days of uh, racing, yeah, we are, uh, you know, at least uh, concerning situation, I would say. Uh, after a big split in the fleet, I think it's the first time we see such a big split in this race. While Team Brunel and Team Axe Nobel were firing off record-breaking runs across the Atlantic, Shabby and crew could do no better than hang on to fifth spot all the way into Cardiff. The Dutch team's stellar performance in the final double point stage with Dong Fong Race Team third saw the mighty Mafre slip once again off the top spot. For us, it's been painful from day one, basically, and we never could catch up. But, you know, it's uh, not much more we could do, and of course, we'll fight it all the way to the end. On the penultimate leg from Cardiff to Gothenburg, Mafre took an early lead, rounding the top of Scotland three miles ahead of second place Team Brunel. Strong winds and high speed drag racing would dominate the rest of the leg, and unfortunately for Mafre, Team Brunel seemed to have found an extra gear. Mafre desperately tried to halt the advance of Bauer Becking, but the Dutch team proved unstoppable, rolling over the top of the Spaniards in 30 knots of wind. With a second place finish behind Team Brunel, Mafre hung on to the top spot on the overall leaderboard by the finest of margins, leading the tie-breaking import series. It would all be decided on the final sprint leg to The Hague, and having wrapped up the import series in Gothenburg, confidence was high. But it wasn't to be. It was Dongfeng Race Team that crossed the finish line first here in The Hague. Second place for Mafre and a third place on the overall leaderboard for Team Brunel. And I have the two skippers here with me in the studio. Shabby Fernandez, skipper of Mafre, and Bauer Becking, skipper of Team Brunel. And first of all, I mean, incredible scenes here in The Hague, Shabby, as, as you sailed through the finish line. I know it wasn't the result that you wanted, but an incredible way to finish this edition of the Volvo Ocean Race. Unbelievable. Uh, of course, another way we wanted. Uh, highly disappointed, but uh, as well, uh, you know, happy, unbelievable how many people on shore in the water, amazing. We knew, and Bauer told us it's going to be amazing, and it really was. And, and, and Bauer, one thing that will be talked about for years later is the split that we saw on either side of the traffic separation zone. What was that like being on one side of it and wondering in your mind which side was going to pay? Well, I think you always make a choice to be the right choice, and uh, we expected a, a shift. I just had a quick chat with uh, Sabi as well. And the shift uh, only came uh, one and a half hour too late. And that's, uh, that's how racing sometimes goes. And uh, Dong Feng has won, so congratulations to them. But you, you guys, both teams, in fact, all of our teams, you've worked so hard, you've taken all the way down to the wire. And I couldn't help noticing your, your hands. I mean, Shabby, I don't know whether we can get, uh, get a look at this, but the hands, can you just hold up your hand and just show people here? <laughs> um, same, same than him. <laughs> This is how hard that you guys have worked and how hard we are the only ones on board which are working. But we talk about the hardships of the Volvo Ocean Race. It's been so long, it's such a hard journey. And both of you, I mean, Shabby, you took it right down to the wire, that final finish line. Yeah, I think we've done a very good leg, this one, you know, a tough start. Uh, but then a very good night, uh, we cut uh, Tom Fenn twice, I think, which is very hard to do. And we had very good boat speed, good calls, and you know, all the way till yesterday, obviously, that we had a mistake after we seen. But uh, I think this morning, the 7 a.m. Uh, skate, we were looking very good. And, and then when the, the 1 p.m. came, that was a little bit harder for us. And, and, and Barra, I mean, this is your eighth edition of the Volvo Ocean Race. Your, your score sheet is unbelievably impressive. Uh, three thirds, three seconds by, by my count. I mean, that's, that's an impressive number. I know that that win is eluding you, so I'm going to ask that question that I'm sure you're dreading. What is next for you? Do you feel like you've succeeded in your dream? Or is it time to roll the dice again? 
Well, everybody knows I, I love the Volvo Ocean Race, so uh, I'm putting my feelers out again for, uh, for a new campaign, trying to get the funding. That's, uh, that's normally harder than actually doing the race. So, but I think uh, hopefully all companies that have watched it today, uh, like how, how the race can be, uh, I think uh, hopefully we can succeed and get the one or two entries again for the next race uh, on the line. All right, well, there you go. Breaking news. Uh, Team Brunel, or at least Bauer Becking, back in. His favourites with the crowd. Uh, you know, shabby, I mean, in terms of for your own career and for Spain, you had the weight of a nation on you. For 10 years, yeah. Spain's been trying to win the Volvo Ocean Race. It really did come right the way down to those final few miles. You must feel very, very proud. You can go back to Spain knowing that, you know, you delivered for them an incredible race. Of course, I'm very proud. Uh, today is not the best day to be happy, but uh, but I will be. And uh, I know we have an, uh, a very good campaign, solid team, same people in Alicante, same people here, on shore and in the boat, which is not easy. And, you know, I'm very happy. This is the fifth campaign we do as a team, two times with Bauer, and, and three, against, so get... uh, three against Bauer. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, but uh, uh, together a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Our goal today was Brunel not to beat us, so. It's, uh, I'm pretty happy. <laughs> One thing you can't help but notice when you see all of your, the sailors together, uh, your rivals, your competitors, but your friends as well. Well, I think that's one of the great things uh, just in the, in the sailing sport. We know this race is over and probably uh, in two weeks' time I might be sailing with, with Xabi or with Patan. Or, and that's uh, one of the things. Uh, we, have, uh, we have great friendship, and, but uh, of course we like to beat each other up if we're on different boats. And, uh, and I think it's just a unique thing. That, uh, that the rivalry is, is good on the, on the water, but uh, great friendship on the shore. A great friendship on the, on the shore. It, it, it really has delivered an amazing race for the fans. I know that this finish with three of you that close is not what you wanted. I know that it, both of you would have liked to have had the race wrapped up by the time you got to Brazil, but for the fans here it, it, at the finish in, in The Hague, I'm sure we can all agree, it was an amazing spectacle. Thank you so much for taking it that close. And, Shabby, for you, Bauer said that he's going to come back into the fray. I mean, what does the future hold for you? Well, let's see. Again, the founding is the most uh, difficult part of it, but... Uh, he's first going to win the America's Cup. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, there's a lot of things to do between here and the next uh, Volvo, but I hope we can be again with a similar campaign and, you know, fighting, fighting for everything at the left side. Well, we know that it's going to be 2021. We're, we're yet to find out what boats, but... Fingers crossed. I, I hope to see both of you there. It's, it really has been a thrill to watch you guys coming down. We have heard now from Mafre, Xabi Fernandez, and from Team Brunel with Bauer Becking. Team Brunel finishing third in this edition of the Volvo Ocean Race. An incredible comeback to drive home the chances that they might be able to lift the trophy. They fought diligently all the way to the end. And we're going to take a little bit of a break now in the studio. Those of you on Facebook, the feed is going to break. Then we're going to bring it back for the prize giving. If you're watching on the website, if you're watching on the app, you can stay with us. There's still some more action to come here from The Hague. But we're going to leave you with a look back at Team Brunel and their incredible journey all the way up to this last final push into The Hague. Back at the helm of Team Brunel is Bauer Becking. This is his eighth attempt to win the trophy, and no one has sailed more miles in the Volvo Ocean Race. Becking made his first appearance as a crew member back in 1985-86. Now, more than 30 years on, Becking's Volvo Ocean Race obsession has only intensified. The really good thing is we're feeling all good, and we actually think we can win this thing. After hiring world-class navigator and partner in crime Andrew Cape, Becking continued to put together an impressive squad with the likes of America's Cup sailors Carl Langford and Carlo Hoosman, not to mention Sailor of the Year and America's Cup and Olympic gold medal winner Peter Burling. The team was last to enter, and with limited practice time, they didn't get off to the best of starts, finishing leg one into Lisbon in sixth place, over six hours behind the leading boat. It's still a learning curve, and, uh, and I think our curve is very steep, so... Uh... Forget about the first one and uh, hack into the second one. A fourth place finish in leg two was an improvement, but not where the team wanted to be. The steep learning curve continued. A fifth on leg four and a sixth on leg six meant many began writing off any hope of seeing Team Brunel lifting the trophy. In Auckland, the team came together and had a very open and honest conversation. With renewed determination, they remained strong and things started to turn around. Here. 
through the hole. After tackling the treacherous conditions of the Southern Ocean, Team Brunel was leading and held off Dong Fong Race Team as the fleet sailed north to take the win. We're a little sad in our heart, very sad in our heart. We know why. Uh, John Fisher's loss uh, sits very deep with us. But of course, uh, Spotify, uh, we sell the very nice leg. And uh, we've got a young of young guys, and they showed, I think, the old foxes in this leg that they are the future and just kept believing in, the, in our own team. So happy chappies right now. The double points victory had put Team Brunel firmly back in the game. In a foggy Newport finish, Mafray stole first place right on the line, pushing Bowery Becking into second. Gutted not to have the win, but it was another podium position and confirmed the theory. Team Brunel had finally found their feet and the battle was far from over. The yeah, result is, uh, is maybe not what we had hoped for, but uh, yeah, second place at sailing can be sometimes really cruel. But I think on the, the, the high note, we can see, uh, I think we sailed a, a very good leg. With three legs remaining, nothing short of a stellar performance, finishing ahead of the two red boats would allow Bowie Becking to claim victory in the Volvo Ocean race after 30 years of trying. It is a must beat Red Boat scenario. We have to beat them both. As the fleet raced across the Atlantic during leg nine, history was made when five of the teams broke the 24 hour Volvo Ocean race speed record. Although Team Axa Nobel established the best run, Team Brunel were looking stronger than ever. We're pushing the boat well and we're doing it in the right direction and, um, and hopefully with the speed that we've got in this kind of conditions that we'll, um, we'll be on the podium at the end of the race. It wasn't just a podium finish that was possible. With their newfound form, they took another double points leg win. And now everybody knew that Team Brunel had every chance to fight for overall victory. Of course, uh, really happy with the result. Uh, beating the two red boats, that was the main objective. Winning, of course, is nice, the double pointer and the bonus point. And then, uh, yeah, I think uh, just ecstatic, of course, had a nice fight uh, to beat Axel in the end as well. So uh, a very happy, uh, very happy team. At the top of Scotland during leg 10, Maffray was in the lead and in their element. But Team Brunel did the impossible. The once invincible reaching speed of Maffray was smashed by Bauer Becking and his crew with apparent ease. So yeah, one big push till the finish and uh, we're going to do everything we possibly can to make Bauer happy and uh, win his first ball. With another leg win, they tied themselves with Maffray and Dong Fong Race Team at the top of the overall leaderboard. Hey. <laughs> Entering the final 900 miles of the 45,000 nautical mile race, three teams started in a dead heat. With everything to play for and nothing to lose, it all came down to this final leg. Yeah, dames and gentlemen, oh, the mop ray is already there. Thank you, thank you very much. Oh, such a wonderful crowd. Thank you very much, dames and gentlemen, that you here been. Fantastic. Van harte welkom here in Den Haag. Eerst even het goede nieuws, want we hebben een beetje energie nodig zometeen voor de prize giving ceremony. We blijven vandaag op het terrein niet tot negen uur, maar tot tien uur, dames en heren. Ja, ja, ja. Dat is mijn energie, dames en heren. Nou, fantastisch. Um, I'm giving over the word now to uh, my lovely colleague Gemma Kerr. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the arrivals prize giving ceremony in The Hague for leg 11, the final leg of the Volvo Ocean Race. Ja, ja. Ja, het is goed dat jullie allemaal Engels verstaan, dames en heren. Dat is natuurlijk fantastisch, want nogmaals hart van harte welkom voor degenen die dat niet verstaan. We are here, the ultimate destination hier in Den Haag. Fantastisch dat jullie hier allemaal zijn. En we gaan de mannen en vrouwen gaan we huldigen. Maar natuurlijk hebben we daar iemand voor nodig, dames en heren. We, we welcome, please, on stage for the official moment, our mayor, our lady mayor, ladies and gentlemen. Let's give her a big hand, dames en heren. Een warm applaus voor onze burgemeester, niemand meer dan mevrouw Pauline Krikke. Okay, I think we need to get going with this because that team cannot wait to get on this stage. So, without any further ado, I'd like to welcome to you the winners of Leg 11, but the winners of the overall Volvo Ocean Race, representing China. Put your hands together for Dong Fong Race Team! Woo! And there they are on stage, ladies and gentlemen, Dong Fong Racing! Put your hands up! 
There they are holding the Volvo Ocean Race trophy. And there she is, ladies and gentlemen, our own proud, ladies and gentlemen. Ze maakt ons Nederlanders zeilers zo trots. Een land van zeilers natuurlijk hier in Nederland. Hier op Scheveningen houdt ze de trofee omhoog. Carolijn Brouwer! And now it is time for our Lady Mayor to hand over the first place trophy for the leg. Ja, en het hele team komt erbij, dames en heren. De trofee wordt gefeliciteerd aan de skipper. De trofee van de etappeoverwinning wordt overhandigd aan de skipper, dames en heren. Ze zijn eerste geworden in deze lek, natuurlijk ook de Volvo Ocean Maar ze hebben deze etappe gewonnen van Göteborg to the Hague Dongfang Race Team. So they have their trophy from the Volvo Ocean Race winners overall. They have their leg trophy as well. And here she is, dames and heren, with her hand in the lucht. Caroline Brouwer, winner of the Volvo Ocean Race 2017-2018. Meer energie dan zeer applaus voor Caroline Brouwer. Ja, zo doen we dat in Den Haag. And now they're presented with the local gifts, ladies and gentlemen. The mayor is presenting the local gifts. It's okay, it's okay, just hand them out. Ladies and gentlemen, a special photo moment, of course. The winners of the Volvo Ocean Race. Matador's great sailors. History in the making here, of course, in The Hague. Dong Fong Race Team! <laughs> such a great team, such a great sports man here in The Hague. So Dong Fong had her cheers, ladies and gentlemen. We have six more teams to go. So please, can we ask Dong Fong to make way for the next team, for the second one who finishes in this race. And I can promise you, ladies and gentlemen, the roof will go off. Dames and gentlemen, the roof will go off. What one final cheer? Yeah, one final cheer perhaps for Dong Fong Race Team Den Haag. <laughs> En dit is fantastisch, dames en heren. Dit willen wij zien in onze hoofdstad van Nederland. Onze sporthoofdstad van Nederland wel te verstaan. Al die grote evenementen hier op het prachtige strand van Scheveningen. En in het centrum van Den Haag. Fantastisch dat u er allemaal bent. En we gaan er zo aan beginnen. Axel Nobel Brunel moet er nog komen, dames en heren. En Annemieke Bes ook nog een keer met Soon Hoon Kais Kellyway. Dus al die energie laat zo meteen richting het podium komen. Are we ready for the second team? I don't know. Are we ready for the second place team? I think that's it. I think so, yeah. Okay, let's put our hands together for the second place finishers for leg 11. It is Team Axel Nobel!
And perhaps while we wait, ladies and gentlemen, while we wait, we can do uh, some sort of a cheer. Here some they sort come. of a cheer all together. All to, all together. So we say, Oxo, Oxo, come on. Louder, come on. Hands. And here they, they come. You. Here they come, ladies and gentlemen. Simeon, Team Pult, Team Oxo Nobel. And now, ladies and gentlemen, to present the team with a gift from the host city, we have the Lady Mayor. Dames and little clogs. Lokale gift, dames en heren, de wooden clock, de mooie klomp. Het is een klein geld, uh, geldklompje eigenlijk. Ja, het mocht wat kosten natuurlijk. Ja, absoluut. Nee, fantastisch. Klein aandenken aan Den Haag, dames en heren. Er staat op van harte welkom in onze thuisstad, in ons Den Haag. Please revisit, please come back to this beautiful stage anytime you want. You're welcome. Pauline Krikke gaat natuurlijk even rond. Met onze fantastische gift van de stad Den Haag. Een replica van de klompboot die mee is gegaan met alle boten over de hele wereld. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a little replica of the wooden clock that has sailed around the world as well, which was the eighth boat of this Volvo Ocean Race. There they have the local gifts, ladies and gentlemen. Now, now we go on. Now we do go on to the second placed trophy, the all important trophy. So if we could please bring that up for our Lady Mayor to present. Trophy. It's on its way. This is all part of it. The suspense, the drama. <laughs> Thank Come you. Come on, this Yeah, all right. And here we go. Second place trophy to Team Axel Nobel. Ja, dames en heren, ze hebben het trofee, ze hebben het champagne. Simeon die weet wel hoe dat open moet gaan, dames en heren. Fantastisch, als vierde geëindigd in deze race. En als tweede in deze lek in hun eigen thuisstad. Laat je horen voor Axo Nobel. Axel Nobel mag aan deze kant het podium af. Deze kant. This side, please, Thank leave you. the stage. Oh. Okay, They're enjoying their moment, and why not? How's the champagne? Tasty. <laughs> okay. And now to receive their third place trophy, please put your hands together for Mapfrey! <laughs> to receive their gift from the host city. Dames en heren, ook zij krijgen natuurlijk de kleine klomp, de kleine geldklomp van Pauline Krikke, onze fantastische burgemeester sinds 2017 hier. En na de vrij ingewikkelde coalitieonderhandelingen is het een hele fijne dag voor mevrouw Krikke. Om dit prachtige mooie evenement mee te maken hier. And the fans are here. Oh, they're so enthusiastic. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it once more. Team 
up for it. And now, to receive the third place trophy, presented by the Lady Mayor. Shabby. Ja, ze hier als derde geëindigd in deze race. Tweede overal. Laat je alsjeblieft horen. Put your hands together for the one and only team Mapfre from Spain, España. And that's how you do it. That's how you do it. That's how we celebrate in Spain and España. Con John. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> okay. okay. Lapping up the energy from their fans who've been ever present. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Wishing I wore my wet weather gear, that's yeah, for sure. Me too, yeah, I got new shoes, but... Well, we go on with the okay. celebration. Are you ready for more? Are you ready for perhaps some more Dutch boat? Yeah. Can I see some Brunel flags in the air? Yeah. Okay. I can see them. Okay, without any further ado, I think it's time to welcome them onto the stage. Let's hear it for Team Brunel! Dames en heren, daar zijn ze. Dan gaan even al die handen luchten natuurlijk. Laat je maar eens horen voor onze eigen Nederlandse Team Brunel. And now to receive the gift from the host city. Those lovely clogs. En ook zijn natuurlijk, dames en heren, de gouden of de ah, gouden klomp, de houten klomp. Het ziet er een beetje goud uit. Die de mannen wegdoen en de champagne is al ingepikt, dus we moeten een beetje oppassen. <laughs> Komt goed. En dames en heren, daar gaan we nog eens even echt een Haags applaus geven. Want let op, let op, let op. Wat hebben ze het spannend gemaakt, die laatste lek. Ze lagen even op Wiena's koers, dat is net niet gelukt. Ze zijn vandaag, zijn ze gefinished. In totaal hebben ze op het podium gestaan, staan ze natuurlijk hier als vierde van deze etappe. Maar uiteindelijk zijn ze derde geworden. Derde in de Volvo Ocean Race, dames en heren. Bauer Backing met Team Brunel. And we need a photo with a bit of champagne. <laughs> ah, te gek, dames en heren, fantastisch. Ik zie hele blije gezichten hier. Zwaai ze nog één keer toe. Ah, oh, so cool. <laughs> Jullie mogen aan deze kant eraf, jongens. This side, please. The exit, so we can go on. There we go. Once more, Team Brunel, yeah. Yeah. Woohoo. That was fantastic. You guys are doing your job very, very well. And now, please welcome onto the stage our fifth place finishers. It is, of course, Turn the Tide on Plastic. Let him hear ya. Turn the tide on plastic. Now, 
Ja, ze zijn het meest diverse team gemiddeld onder de 30 jaar. Wat een fantastische heroïsche daad. En ze gaan nog met de import race nog strijden om een plek voor plaats 6. Dames en heren, laat je horen voor Turn the Tide on Plastic van de United Nations. And now to receive their host city gift. En onze burgermoeder is er bijna klaar mee. Pauline Krikke, dames en heren. En dan wordt ons wachten beloond, want dan gaan ook zij de champagne krijgen. En ook zij gaan die champagne ontkurken op een behouden thuiskomst, zoals wij weten in opscheveningen hoe dat moet. En dan mag ik u vragen de handen bij elkaar te doen, dames en heren. Where's the champagne? Where's the champagne? Ah, there's the champagne. We zijn te weer over hier, dames en heren, uw handen op elkaar. Wat fantastisch. Zij zijn ook thuis. They completed this around the globe match as well. Ladies and gentlemen, turn the tide on plastic. Yeah, give them a big wave. Uh, you can leave this side, please. Thanks. The final challenge of the Volvo Ocean Race to leave the prize giving stage. The correct side. <laughs> I would live here. I would want to live here. All right. Next up, please welcome and give that fantastic cheer to our sixth place team, Sun Hung Kai Scallywag. <laughs> Dames en heren, wat de matadoren, wat hebben deze gasten het zwaar gehad, maar ze staan hier. He, ze zijn hier weer thuis, hier in Den Haag, dames en heren. En kijk eens daar, voor u aan de rechterkant, voor mij links. Daar staat onze Nederlandse trots. Let's give it up voor Olympisch zilver, maar nu Volvo Ocean Race, Annemieke Pes. And now to receive the host city gift from the Lady Mayor. Dames en heren, de laatste klompen worden uitgereikt natuurlijk door uh, de burgemeester, de, bur de burgermoeder zou ik willen zeggen. En de champagne. We've created some extra bubbles, which is good. And I know the mayor is sprinting off stage when the champagne is poured. Dames en heren, laat het alsjeblieft horen. Soon Hoon Kai Skellyweek met natuurlijk onze eigen Annemieke Bess. Ja, uh, fantastisch. I think that was the best champagne spray I've ever seen. I know, I know. Yeah, this was the best. And this pre uh, shuffling as well. Yes. People sprinting for cover. Professional. Of yeah. course, always. So, we're on to the last team, I believe. Right. I think it's time. Please put your hands together. They've been a fantastic team. They've been through ups and downs, but they have done fantastically. Put your hands together for Vestas 11th Hour Racing.
Wisdom's taking the limelight. Yeah, there we go. They're going to take a step forward towards the audience, and you're going to applaud to that. You're going to welcome them with a big The Hague applause, ladies and gentlemen. Team Vestas, 11th hour racing. They got too excited with the champagne moment there. <laughs> Before they leave, please come and receive your gifts from the host city, presented by the Lady Mayor. Please make a line over here, lads. Line up, please, line up, please, because the mayor is giving you something special. Please line up and show your appreciation to this home city. Final destination, of course, The Hague. Has really dig deep to organize this fantastic finish place of the Volvo Ocean Race this year. Let's give it up once more, ladies and gentlemen, with the wooden clocks. Seventh in this race, fifth overall, dames and heren. Uw hand op elkaar, uw applaus natuurlijk voor Vestas 11th Hour Racing. Oh, oh. <laughs> this side, this side. Well, Gemma, what a day, what a day, what a day. An amazing day, and I have to say, it's huge thanks to our teams, but also huge thanks to all of you for turning out and supporting. That does conclude our prize giving ceremony, but give yourselves a huge round of applause, because you have been fantastic. <laughs> all that's left to say is thank you to our teams, thank you to our mayor, Paulina Cricker, and don't forget that the village will stay open until 10 p.m. And until 10 p.m., we have lots of activities here. Thanks a lot to you, Gemma Kerr, ladies and gentlemen. Give her a big hand, Gemma Kerr. Yeah. Thank you. That's very good. All, lots of activities, and we have starting a band in the back. And leg 11 completed. We now know where we are on the overall scoreboard. Historic scenes here for an exceptional finish all the way down to the wire for the Imar South finish line. It was Dongfeng race team that was victorious, and that final jibe towards the line, they held their nerve. They got their tactics absolutely spot on. So let's take a look at the scoreboard and see how the overall leaderboard for the offshore section of the Volvo Ocean Race weighs up. Well, after 11 legs, it is confirmed Dongfeng Race Team are at the top, 73 points in total. They get the bonus point for winning this leg. Mafre in second, Team Brunel take third spot. But Annie, we've got Team Axelabel in fourth. We knew that was going to happen. Vestas Limithar Racing in fifth. Team Sun Hunkai Scallywagon turn the tide on plastic. Joint on points, there's still some places up for grabs. Yeah, there is still a, le a race left in this race and it's all going to come down to the import race, which is the breaker of ties. So um, I think Turn the Tide and Plastic have got a bit of work to do in it, but I'm sure once they've had a little celebration tonight and maybe a bit of a sleep tomorrow, they can put their heads down and start planning their attack. Uh, it, it, and it's going to be a further continuation of what has been an exceptional showdown. I mean, we knew that this finish was going to be fantastic to watch. We hope that you have. Annie, thank you so much for, for joining me. I mean, is there a way that we can sum up everything that we've seen? Highs and lows. I mean, we have had, uh, have had cries of joys, but we've also seen tears of disappointment as well. Yeah, it's been a really emotional day. Um, I think inevitably it's an emotional day. It's the end of a very long race, but this finish has been, well, insane. I mean, who would have thought it? And uh, yeah, everyone should just be incredibly proud of themselves wherever they finish. I mean, they've got around the world. It's pretty amazing. Adventure completed, hardships won. It has been an exceptional day here in The Hague. But of course, the journey is not yet over. We are still going to see some action out on the water. And it is going to take place on next 
Saturday. We are going to see the teams take to the water once more for the final race in the import race. It is going to be at 11.15 UTC, 13.15 local time. Tune in for that. We are going to see the culmination of Sun Hunkai Skellywag and Turn the Tide on Plastic. Who is going to finish sixth on the overall leaderboard? 11 legs completed. The Hague, the ultimate destination, putting on an incredible show. The fans here in the city have been exceptional and the cheers for every single one of our teams that they completed the lap of the planet and their nine month journey to this last final port has been heartbreaking to see. We have had exceptional scenes with Dongfong race team lifting the trophy, an unbelievable journey completed. The Volvo Ocean Race now finished, except for the import series coming up in the next few days. Annie, brilliant to see Dongfong race team win it. As you say, Team Brunel, Mafra, they all could have done it. Very interesting to hear that Bauer Becking, some of the other skippers are already thinking about the next one. Before we get to that point, we have got to go to the import race. Team Brunel will be looking to stamp their authority here on their home port. Dongfeng race team, after winning here for leg 11, clinched the title, lifted the trophy, and Charles Cordrillia has fulfilled the lifelong ambition of being a skipper and winning the race. Team Action Abel took second place. Mafre took third, putting them on the second place on the overall scoreboard. And then Team Brunel coming across the line, secured third on the podium. So many fans, so many sights, so many sounds. The cheers today were absolutely deafening, but these memories will live on. Each of our teams are gonna be well received by all of the warmth and the hospitality here over the next few days. Really has been a very fitting finish to what has been built and what has lived up to to a very historic leg. In Gothenburg, we knew how important this final push to the finish line was gonna be. We knew it was gonna come down to those last few miles. What we didn't realize was just how in the balance it was gonna be. We didn't know that Dongfeng race team had it all sewn up right till that last minute. Now, fans of the Chinese team can relax. Their team has done it. My thanks to Annie for joining me. My thanks for all of you for tuning in over the last nine months. The Volvo Ocean Race now has only one more little surprise in store. Turn the tide on plastic and Sun Hunkai Scallywag are going to take to the water for the import series and duke it out for sixth place. On Saturday, 11.15 UTC, 13.15 local time. Tune in. You do not want to miss this last roll of the dice for the Volvo Ocean Race.